This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Live from the Raw Radio X studios in downtown Detroit, this is the IT in the D show. St. Patrick's Day, a day to celebrate Irish traditions like drinking and fighting and dancing and drinking. Mm, Let's get ready to rumble! Alive, it's alive! It's alive! The following program is intended for mature audiences. Excuse me, sir, is this the Delta House? Sure! Come on in! Where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Well, the best way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day would, of course, be to come to church. The doors are wide open and very welcoming. So you yeah, have yeah. no boots? No. You have no gloves? No. You have no hat? No. You have no scarf? No. You have no scraper? No. How long have you lived in Michigan? All my life. <laughs> you, sir, are an idiot. Shall we play again? I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so... Well, especially with the back doors open. We just lost our clean tag on <laughs> iTunes. Hell yeah. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. How are we not strength. sponsored by PBR and Twitter? Jimmy. I, Damn. I, 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 <laughs> take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! I used to hang out at the Mogumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> Shut up! Woo. I love St. Patty's Day because you get to drink a lot and you're wearing reed and I love you so much. This is the ladies' man. How much <laughs> scotch did you drink that night, by the way? <laughs> Half a bottle. Okay, then shut the hell up. Woo. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat stick. Turn your microphone off. Just get out. Yeah, you're in your underwear. I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. Bear me. <laughs> I may have to wipe the geek off. Hell yeah. You're not very informative, but why are you entertaining? Woo. Who was St. Patrick? He was the guy that gave us this day to get drunk and wasted and have fun. Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. You're so white right now. I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. Shut up. Stop talking. I don't know who brought that bell in, but Bob's got a new toy. <laughs> I guess Captain so. Soundboard doesn't know how to run the soundboard. Cap- when are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. Hell yeah. Are we at a break yet? No. So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Move it for speed. Go. Low hanging fruit. And we are drunk. <laughs> this is the St. <laughs> Patrick's Day version of the IT and the D show. Speak for yourself. Baby boy, oh, we're fine. I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> we're here live <laughs> in the Robert Hood Studios. Worst Irish accents ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving all she got, Captain. I don't know, is that Scottish? That Scottish. Scottish. Yeah. Just hence, hence the name Scotty. Yeah. This is the, uh, <laughs> this is, oh. But you know what? Thanks for playing. <laughs> we can't, you can't be like. <laughs> a nice party. A German, German guy's going to be named Jeremy. Like, you're stupid. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> this is the IT and the D show. Show. We're already um, off to an awesome We start. are presented to you by IT and the D here in the Raw Radio Studios. It's alive. It's, it's official. Alive. Yes, it's all it's official. happy, shiny, good. We're well, the Russell well, Industrial Center in beautiful Midtown, to Detroit, Michigan. Um, yeah, so we had a we had a little bit of a rebrand go on this last week. You're not going to do intros. You're not Come gonna, on. Who are we? You're not going to be Mr. Who are we? As always, this is uh, the show is hosted by Mr. Monday Night, Bob the I thought you weren't guy. doing it anymore. Jeff the Voice of reason, <laughs> Dave the Geek, <laughs> and uh, this is the Brightwing episode. We got the enti- I think the entire Brightwing office is live in the studio today. Uh-huh. Sure, are. almost all of it. We got Russ here back from Ethiopia. Thank you for your service, sir. Good to be back. You're so, they're sending tonight. you back, though, right? Yes. Okay, so you're just here on vacation. Right. You're so bad, you vacation in Detroit. That's right. Vacation Detroit. And Russ brought us back delicious Ethiopian beer, which is a lot better than I thought it was going to be, because yes, it sounds kind of weird. Very tasty. But yeah, Thank is, you very uh, much for the adult Saint beverages. George. It's yummy. 
Yeah, that, that's been through France and Philadelphia and all kinds of places. Yeah, they actually let him through customs not once but three times. He has diplomatic, wow. diplomatic immunity. Yes, diplomatic I, immunity. I have, I have my diplomatic <laughs> immunity card in my wallet. I've been trying to get that wow. for years. Can, does that, is that Are we still talking about here? the card? Say again? <laughs> is that worth anything here? No, because he's uh, in the worth, U.S. No. Oh, here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but in Ethiopia, I can do whatever, whatever I want. Nice. Excellent. So if I run over a guy's goat and kill it, no, we always said, you know, just hold up my card. Every time I hear, every time that, I hear that, that, it reminds me of Cannonball Run, where you get the f- two flags on your hood, and you got the, like the, the limo with the orangutan. <laughs> 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 no, apparently it's uh, golf carts driven by monkeys and, oh. and wild donkeys running through the streets. That's, nice. Those are the nice. photos he posts. Actually, on the on the Facebook page on Facebook slash IT in the day, I put up a picture of a, of a Google van hitting schmucking a donkey. Oh, that was uh, and I, it was. I, <laughs> I still can't believe they and, and put it, and that it kept out on there. going. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. <laughs> it shows the back because that's where the pinpoint was. Right. And so it shows like the donkey and like <laughs> it's like so rolling over. It was pin the pinpoint on the donkey is what it was. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So just uh, to cover some business, our phone number is three one three four six two zero one zero seven. You can find us on Twitter at at it and the d. You can hit us up on Facebook forever now at facebook.com slash IT and the D. Yay. And our site is IT and the D.com. There is no more DetroitNet.org if you haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it, it's, it's there. Just a, it's just a redirect, it right? Just, yeah, it just sends you to where we want you to be. <laughs> for for the 12 antagonizing long years of people calling us Detroit.net. Oh, my God. That was annoying. Or DetroitOrg.net. Uh, yeah, Detroit. Detroit dot dot yeah. com. Something schwa. You finally something. got fed up and we are only IT and the D. Exactly. We, who owns the Chiefs? Right. We do now. We <laughs> own the Chiefs. We do. <laughs> so, God, where do we... So, it, I guess it is... Thanks, the party was Thursday. Yeah, so... Do you want to finish your introductions? Yeah, you just did Russ. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's, oh, wait, they are here. They yeah. Are, yeah. <laughs> and, right. and, you know, and, their, and their mics are hot, too. So. <laughs> right. No, so we do have we have Gary uh, joining us from Brightwing, and I'm assuming you're one of the recruiters. We didn't really get a chance to talk pre-show. I do uh, business development and recruiting. Okay. Yeah. All right, very cool. I swing both ways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. where's that bell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Elisa in April. And you guys have been on with us a couple times now. Yeah, you're all veterans. Brightwing. We're veterans. veterans. They brought, this is our fourth time. No, it's our third. Third, third time? Well, who's kind of well, we had April back once when you weren't time. invited. Oh. Yeah, who, yeah, who's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> and they brought Guinness to celebrate uh, St. Yes, Patty's Day. Yes, thank you very much for the... Bob for the... Yeager for... Because he wanted Yeager. <laughs> I didn't... You brought Yeager. <laughs> you said... I said specifically on Thursday, Iced. Bob. It's been, it's been on he ice all day. On ice. Ice. And I said, I'm scared. <laughs> 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 Nothing good can come of this. Right. Y'all have one. So, you know, I guess that's a good starting topic. So, okay. So, we'll tell you what. We'll dive into our event, and then we'll come back on a, on St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, we did have our pink slip party, uh, St. Andrews Hall. Saint so Pat- the one thing that dove out at me, um, so the, you know, the first pink slip party we had, we'd have like 125 recruiters RSVP. Yeah, and there'd be like 60 badges left badges over at the badges end of the night. Yeah, this right. event. You know, it wasn't the biggest crowd we had, but there was like three badges left at the end. And of the we night. burned through we burned every through single all... blank that I brought. Yeah. yeah, but like you know, it wasn't like I so said we were maybe like a hundred short from the last one, but everyone said the crowd was quality. There wasn't like one butthole at the at the event. Everyone was had good experience. Yeah, no. Every recruiter um, we heard, every recruiter we talked to, uh, basically had the same thing to say that the caliber and quality of the people that were there was a step up from what was there last time around, and I'll take that all day, every day. Yeah, absolutely. I've had multiple conversations with recruiters that have been there for the first time, and they're like, wow. Like, where do I start? What direction do I yeah. go? And I said, just walk. Well, well, like, walk and the, one, the, the ones that made me laugh, or, you know, I, like I told you guys earlier, you know, I would take a lap around the room, and you know, right. one of the newbie recruiters would stop me and be like, this is the greatest networking event I've been at in my entire life. I've been here for like 20 minutes. I'm and like, like, okay. Where do you go? Yeah, like, exactly. What, <laughs> what dumbass events are you going to? Oh, were you at a museum earlier? Today, <laughs> 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 he was at Mac Ranch's event. <laughs> yeah, right. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Damn it, I hate when I do. <laughs> did hashtag IT the D trend globally? No, I, I, I wouldn't know Hashtags. if we did. I don't, I don't even know, how, I, I don't even know how I got up in the morning the next day. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. That <laughs> all, all of Detroit's problems are solved, right? That's what I figured out. Uh, why not? Yeah, you know. And then because hashtag. And then, yeah. but no. So I mean, Thursday night was outstanding. We had a, we had a really great turnout, great crowd, great. food. Food from Bucharest Grill again, uh, as always. Yummy. yummy. Um, we actually killed that off too, did we not? Yeah, I like very, very little left over. Yeah, I yeah. Well, I mean, it's that great. I mean, how 
how can you not? I mean, I, there was one guy there that I think went through like seven rounds of food. Right. <laughs> well, Steve said he had to cut himself off. Yeah. <laughs> it was like Mark at my wedding. It's like he, he ate like 14 pieces of schnitz when he found out it was good. It's like, don't you eat? Don't you have homes? <laughs> soup yeah. kitchen? Don't you ever eat at home? <laughs> Go home, people. <laughs> but again, the whole, the whole point of us doing this is about results. It's not about patting ourselves in the back. It's not about being on cloud nine. It's about... You know, getting people back to work that that otherwise might not have the opportunity. Well, I mean, and that was the one. I mean, you know, the the meme that I posted up on the on the IT and the D page. You know, that night was. You know, I mean, seriously, one guy working the room got three interviews lined up for Friday and, that, and Monday, yeah, it was a handful of uh, and it had a handful cards. of business cards from recruiters that you know just uh, wide open. Yeah, like it was 30, outstanding. Thirty business cards or There's something. There's an interesting barely... uh, message from my mom that you should read there. Uh oh. <laughs> Wow, yeah, he just got I, dismissed. Now I'm telling you, yeah, you, uh, my, uh, yeah, oh, uh, mm, uh, <laughs> that sounded better in your mind, didn't it? No, I just I realized I didn't want to go there because I'm trying to be nice to Russ because he brought us good beer and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> but those, I think, honestly, we're at the point now where we can only pull out like two of those events a year. I don't have. I don't know that we would have the energy to do. By the time two. Friday was done, I mean, I slept all day. Well, since, and I was a that, good soul that wasn't well, just the pink slip party. I I know, was, we I were know. wrestling we, on Friday well, night. And, and yeah. we, we were all kind of at, at Mr. Steve's afterwards. So that Yeah, and God bless Mr. Steve's. How is Mr. Steve's not just slammed every So there's night? a bar to the right of the St. Andrew's Hall called Mr. Steve's Place, and the door's locked, and so I knock on the door because I know it's open because we've been there before, and there's a little old lady, and so it reminds me of like the old European grandmas, and she takes her walker, takes about five minutes to get to the front door, lets us in. And there's, she, a, there's a group of like 20 of us. Oh, yeah. She proceeds right. to give us a round of drinks and then goes upstairs and wakes up the old man. He comes down. Well, Steve all, we, comes all we know is that she disappears and goes upstairs. Yeah, yeah. She comes back downstairs. Yeah, she didn't say anything. She just yeah, walked she away. Just walked away. <laughs> Came back downstairs. He's behind her, buttoning up his shirt and rubbing like, his eyes. Rubbing his eyes. <laughs> and, and mind you, it's like it's like 8:45 at night. <laughs> and I've never seen an older bottle of bourbon on there, so we had to drink the whole thing just to see if it was real. Didn't they have like a layer of dust on it too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's like it had every a bottle layer behind. of something on right. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll be honest with you, I, not to say I'm proud, but I'm I'm happy how those events go off just because we're, we're providing something that I think the whole area is lacking and that's a decent venue to to, to meet the people that are actually hiring you. Um, job fairs, again, you you know, you'd sit in a line for a half an hour, you'd sit and you'd finally meet Elise and she's going to hand you a postcard going, submit your resume online, smack in the butt. And well, it, not Elise specifically. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a marketer. I know, they but won't. I'm just, I, metaphor, metaphor, roll with me. I understand. Work with it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? The job fairs are so non like there's no per- there's no personality, there's no uh building the there's no networking, there's no getting to know anyone. It's just it's like no face. So I you know, again well, it, it's your typical job fair, yes. Yeah. That yeah, that's the exact opposite right, of us. Right, that's a are you guys a job fair? No. No. Or the anti I just think it's fair. funny that people were calling the St. Andrews number asking when the next one is. Yeah, they're yeah, they're coming up to Bob and I'm like, what do we tell these people? They're asking about food, they're asking about drinks, they're asking if they should bring resumes, and we're like, Wow. This is actually a first Well, it, well my standard yeah, tell them to go read our site. Well, we right, have all yeah, those yeah, questions exactly. answered out there. Yeah. But no, she shot us an email, what was it, Saturday afternoon? Yeah. That just said the phones were still blowing up asking when Unreal. our next event was. Yeah. Our favorite thing to do when people ask when the next event is, um, <laughs> I used to do this all the time, and I'm such a dick for doing it, is I take a screenshot of the website that says yep. when the next event is, <laughs> put a red arrow in a, a red circle, arrow, yeah. and then I email that back. It takes like five minutes longer than just actually typing it, but wow, does it make well, me feel better Well, we call that the MS Paint effect, right? Right, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, we had to, that just happened with the, the launch of the new site. The guy was like, I can't find your events. It doesn't show me oh where everything is. Oh, my gosh. And I did. On I took a screenshot. And I did a big red circle. Did you reply back to that guy? Oh, absolutely. Our, I, s- our site goes live like five hours later. We get an email complaining about it. Yeah. So and I he, so I took a screenshot and did a big red circle like in paint and then a big arrow going to <laughs> awesome. it. Awesome. And I shot it back and I'm like, look, dude. I'm like, I'm I'm sorry. I'm like, could did that if not appear read, on your screen? I yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's using some weird browser. Who knows? I'm like, did that not appear on your screen? And he was like, and he did. He shot me a note back and he was like. I'm, I'm an idiot. I can't help but see it now. That, Sorry. Do you ever use that Google that for you thing? My husband does oh, it all the time. Oh, yeah. I'll ask him a, cu- a question I can clearly look up myself in five seconds, and he's like, let me Google that for you. And it goes like, <laughs> That's what all IT in. people do. If, yeah. Wasn't that a meme earlier? Like, yeah, exactly. What, what if, if Google didn't exist? Well, IT no, computer people heavy people just <laughs> Google their problems. Blown. Right. <laughs> right. So it, with it being St. Patrick's Day, I only have one funny story. So I went to, I wanted a corned beef and the boiled, you know, 
and Duffy's had it. So I said, oh, I'm going to go there for lunch. Had a ginger ale, you know, because I had to work, and I ducked in real quick. Guy sitting next to me talking to me. So I go there at 5 o'clock just to say hi to the locals, right, because I know I'm not going to be there tonight. Local. And uh, I grab a Guinness, and then I look. There's that guy in that same seat. So I, like, I lean over to him, like, I hope you got up to pee. <laughs> and he just looks at me, and I go, there's people. What? It's 5 o'clock, man. There's people I've never seen so drunk in my life. Like, they've been there since 10 in the morning. Oh, yeah. And just pounding. And I'm like, are you? Well, well and again. buddy of mine started at Blarney Stone this morning at 7. Well, exactly. My and buddy it, Kurt was customer one and two. Him and his buddy were one and two at Old Chalet this morning. Yeah. Are you nuts? Yeah. I, Those days are long gone Well, and that's, that's one of the topics like, I, I don't have the energy was, for that. Yeah. I, why, we're not 20 anymore. Why? Right. Why? Well, since, why? since we've been 22, we would go to Chicago. <laughs> The weekend before, and then hit Old Shillelagh. Right. This is like the first year, so I'm texting with like you know the, Joe and all those guys, and we're like, right. It's the end of an era, man. We're like, we're all old men. <laughs> we're like, we're working today. Get off my lawn. <laughs> oh my god. Get out of my bar, people. This right. is my Muldoon. So now I go in, have one Guinness, and I'm done. And that's my St. Patty's. Before I would like have cups of corned beef on my shirt. Well, before you you pour it on your Cheerios. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have cups of corned beef. No, you know how those little when you have the beads and there's a little shot glass that's right here. Oh, yeah. The one year I was eating and my and Ew. all the trimmings would fall into it. <laughs> Well, it's, it like, was, it's like it's like second dinner. That's such a Ron Swanson cut. And it was there for like it was there for like three four hours, and everyone was just laughing. They're like, "Bob, you gonna eat that? Bob, you gonna eat that?" I'm like, "What?" I finally saw it. and I ate it. They're like, "Ah, oh my god, that's the grossest thing I've ever seen." So every like, time I see one of those cups, it makes me laugh about the old corned beef. Um, next topic. <laughs> yeah, moving. Around. How do you segue away from that? I don't understand. Cups of meat. Uh, let's yeah. see. Yeah, what, we, what, just what, found the, we just found the title of this episode. Yeah, I, I, actually, I was going to go with uh, for the. Uh, there was a, a funny meme floating around, or an interesting meme that you. It's physically impossible to say Irish wristwatch like at a normal speaking tone and a normal i'm not even going to try that it's, yeah, it just it just doesn't work out that way next i'm drinking beer from ethiopia i'm not no, going to try that the one, the one i thought was interesting was how warren buffett who's the person behind the, the billion dollar bracket or we're in buffet buffet um the person behind the billion dollar bracket has come out and said you're an idiot if you play the billion dollar bracket what is it there's no way in hell is that the word yeah it's it's one in nine yeah, so what is it? It's, it's nine two past trillion. Million. One in nine quintillion chance of winning. And so what I didn't realize, because you know they don't tell you those on the commercials, but they limited it to fifteen million entries. So since How does that math work? So since there's a one in nine quintillion chance of winning, your odds are like point zero 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 one two. And your so name you're saying there's a chance. And your yeah, name, exactly. thank you. I was just gonna say that. And your name is gonna get whored out to quick and loans well, so hard. So oh, that's what everybody's God, yeah. freaking out about is that if you look at the f- you know, the form that they want today. you to fill out, I, I did one you know, today. your name, your address, your date of birth, your, your you know, every little yeah. piece of information that anybody and everybody would ever want to know about you from a marketing perspective. Bo- uh, yeah. It, no, no, not worth it. And so, the, but the f- interesting part of the story was Buffett basically saying, there's no way that, like, even at the outside chance, like, let's say you make it to the final four and you're still running a perfect bracket. I'm going to call you up and I'm going to say... I'll give you $10 million to drop out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Accepted. Actually, I would take that. With, I know, would take that in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. I would take 10000 <laughs> Isn't that deal or no deal? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, deal. Case number five, done. But then out. for the bill, no. What's cooler than ten million? A billion, right? <laughs> uh, 11, I don't know. Eleven billion. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out because there there is starting to be a little bit of a backlash. Brewing. I've never even gotten one of my four bracket. I think I did one in my whole life. One bracket right. Like, you know, out of the four going in. My problem is that I just, like, I can't help it. I just, the name of the school is funny to me, and so I always vote Gonzaga all the way. Yeah, but Gonzaga. I usually make it to the Sweet 16, then they get you know, bounced. I don't care, Gonzaga. <laughs> Nice Gonzaga. I want to vote for who's got the prettiest colors. They usually do better than I do anyway. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. Well, everyone tries to pick the upset and all that stuff, and they usually you have a, a bracket against my friends. And I always pick the number ones, and I just run it. And I got bombed last year because there's so many upsets. So I don't even. I'm not going to do it this year. Is there still backlash in the in the corporate world? Like you know, people poo pooing about the whole bracket thing and you know what people, gambling at work and whatnot. Because you know what companies walk, are doing. There's a guy walking around in Chrysler today saying, "Would you like to participate in this charity event?" And he had this whole write up, like a cover page, like. A TPS cover report and a, a CYA you, cover and, report. Yeah, and you flip it open and it's the brackets. You know what my I'm customers like, really? are doing? 
almost all of them. There's a party in every city in the central region. Right. Um, um, on fr- the Friday when, you know, because they know no one's going to work anyway. Right. So they bring in food and everyone chills out and they have all the vendors in and they get money from them and they just have a big party. So no one's going to do anything anyway. Yeah. I mean, it gets all your Fox customers smarter. together. The customers aren't going to do anything either. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, I think embrace instead of fight it. Cause yeah, nobody, exactly. You know, everyone's going to be on their phone looking at the scores anyway. Right. You know? Right. And speaking of dumb people, so surprise, there's a measles out. Break in New York City. What the hell is where measles? People are dying. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny McCarthy. Jenny, thanks, Jenny McCarthy. So <laughs> <laughs> you hear about the backlash with her on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. The oh, whole yeah. Ask Jenny thing? Yeah. Just an idiot. But yeah, so now we've got a measles outbreak, which I'm sure oh, makes nice the hipster cool. queen of Brooklyn thrilled. Uh, she's probably had it. She had swine flu or Nile flu or <laughs> some kind what? of what? bird flu or some shit. I don't know. I'll, I'll give her hipster bird flu. flu. Hipster <laughs> flu. Hipster <laughs> flu. She had it before anybody knew it was cool. Yeah. Way before it was cool. <laughs> what the hell are the measles, though? I don't know. They're like, you break out in red dots, but like worse than chicken pox. You no, we were talking about that. Somebody said they had the shingles. And I said, God, isn't that oh, yeah. funny? What did I say like when you have like Lyme disease, the shingles, lupus, and gout? It's like the four diseases that are like people laugh That's at you acceptable about. to make fun of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you got Lyme disease, <laughs> man. Like, what? Like, oh, you could die from that? Oh my god, I'm sorry for laughing. Yeah, no, it does not. There make- was a mom at school. She had lupus, and I laughed my ass off. I'm like, <laughs> Because it sounds so stupid. <laughs> Leukoplakia. <laughs> yeah, diseases should not have mockable names. It just doesn't work out that way. Um, but no, so then we were uh, one of our usual favorite topics, the NSA. Uh, the All the plans that are out there about how the NSA was planning to infect millions and millions and millions of uh computers with malware and backdoors and, and all doing that, that stuff. Oh, yeah. So they were basically they have servers out there. Are you that, surprised? No. But, no. They, but they're putting servers out there pretending to be Facebook servers. Yeah. Prote- yeah and Zuckerberg's like, all pissed off about it. That's, yeah. Like, that, that's the hilarious Like thing. spoofing Facebook server oh, names so the traffic's on. routing to them. Yeah. So that'll that'll be the next big bit of fun that's going to break. That's instantly. just fraud, right? That's That like steps over a line that... Doesn't really exist. Well, it's fishing. But it's it's the true the truest definition of fishing that there is. But when the government Fraud. does it, it's okay. Right. No, I like how right. Diane Feinstein too. Oh, uh, yeah. When yeah. you spy on the people, it's great. Spy on me. Oh, screw you! I hate you. <laughs> hey, hey, let, me, let me get your your ambulance. Oh, yeah, That's she, about what that you, is. Did you read about this? She went crazy about the NSA spying on her. Yeah. It's like the NSA shit when the spy on the people. And then when it gets to Congress, then it's like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. For <laughs> well, the for the not for me. That's yeah, what exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. as I say, not as I do. Well, that's yeah. why I loved the. the the meme. Wait, so you can track my phone, but you yeah. lost a yeah, plane. That, I, yeah, Ooh. That <laughs> Ooh. that's what I don't understand about the whole Malaysian airline thing. You got 230 people on there, all have probably have smartphones. Yep. They're probably all turned on. Mm-hmm. Can't you track the phones? Well, but th- so that's that's what they've said is that's well, that was part of the Can one. We talk of the, about the coolest conspiracy theory coming from that. Well, so well, one of the weird things that was going on was so people were trying to call their phones and their and phones were ringing. were ringing, right? But they still couldn't ping locate them. I don't understand that. Yeah, like that doesn't make sense at all. They had a bunch well, of not tel- to mention, let's say their phones were at the bottom of the ocean. Wouldn't they immediately go to voicemail? Yeah, they, right. yeah they'd yeah, be they unreachable. Had, yeah. yeah, they had a bunch of telecom people talking about that, that. If they were actually dead, if the batteries were taken out of the phones, or if they were underwater submerged. It wouldn't ring. It wouldn't ring. It would go right st- straight to voice voicemail. So the fact that they are ringing... Uh, WTF. You know, they, they don't understand. They can't explain it, which it's is baffling. Episode. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm lost. Mm-hmm. The coolest conspiracy that came out of it, though, is apparently there's some semiconductor that they just put patents on. It's supposed to be change the world. It's going to be it's like the next big thing, like the next Terminator, the, the, Skynet. The water-powered car guy that they killed and made go away. Uh, right. Yeah. But four of the five people that own this patent um, are, were are on known. this plane. So everyone's looking at the fifth guy going, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But it's, you know, it's like, yeah, I want had, it all. You had a ton. Me ache that morning yeah, if it right, make right. the flight. <laughs> but if you pay attention to all the news reports now, now they're actually calling it a hijacking. Like they, if you notice that subtle change in the yeah. in the headlines, now it's now it is hijacked. Now they they did you know evasive Don't maneuvers. The media. Yeah, exactly. The, right, but oh, you know now it's flying below radar and somewhere in Pakistan. Okay, where was your point? Yeah, whereas, yeah, day yeah. one, they were at 40,000 feet. That's not below radar. Right. It doesn't work that way. 
if they wouldn't use 1950s technology to track planes, maybe they could have found the stupid Yeah, they don't thing. actually. <laughs> they're actually getting a skin paint off the airplane, so the airplane, you know, ping back when they uh, when the when the beam hits them. Well, what was the course other course course speed name and all that good stuff? So, they haven't yeah. changed the technology yeah, though since the 50s. Well, Rolls uh, Rolls Royce, the the company that does the engines, they were saying that their engines ping satellites for maintenance yeah. updates. They were sitting still getting pings from the engines, mm-hmm. well after. It, it lost radio contact. So that's another bit of data that's if like, I can listen I to, If I can listen to radio in my car from anywhere, they could find a stupid plane. You right. Would you would think. You would think. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it'll be good conspiracy fodder for so what a long time. What's the stupid crap Premise about the, the speaking of the government and all that crap? What's it with the government handing over ownership of like ICANN to the UN? Oh, because that's going to be the whole new internet tax. That's what that is. So, yeah. So the U.S. is going to relinquish their last bit of control. When but I know ICANN... the U.S. had control over Dude, it. Dude, we invented it. This is I, the part I that know, pisses but me no off. One, no one, why are we giving up control? But nobody control, no one really controlled or owned it. I yes, we do. Because no, we, yeah, we, we, we own the root DNS server. We own, we own ICANN. You own the root DNS server. <laughs> 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 Your face is a root DNS <laughs> you're, 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 you're a root. You're, you're, a, root. <laughs> you're a DNS server. Don't have, another, have, have another shot of Jaeger there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, good. it's good for you. <laughs> hey, Zanny, shut up. No, no, so, so the really having so Jaeger bombs over there with yeah. What? Yes, yeah, he's chasing. So a, he, you judged me when I suggested it on Thursday. You're like Jaeger bombs. What? What am I? Nineteen. And here you are no, so, pouring Jaeger. So, Dave, bombs. help me understand this. So I get it that I can, you know, controls the domains and all that side. And right. So I can if is you, I can I can is also the top level registrar. Correct. So GoDaddy. Joker, you know, any donor registrar, everyone you go, needs yeah, to go through them. You always have to go through ICANN. So, right. Well, so part of the backlash, and this part I really can't disagree with, the part part of the backlash against ICANN is all these stupid new TLDs that they're coming out yeah, with. Yeah, we've been talking Dot about that. bike. Yeah, which are all essentially money grabs. Right. You know, and so people are getting it's pissed off. It's a land off. rush. Yeah, and people are getting pissed off about that, and that part I completely agree with, but as far as the U.S. relinquishing control of the internet, no, I'm sorry, we created it, we own it, it's ours, but go if away. You, yeah. Yeah, but what so saying, if it goes to the UN and they tax it, you think how many days would it take for someone to bring up a quote unquote Internet two and a, a complete like you know the well, problem? And I'm sorry, the problem, what has the, the UN with proven that? themselves to be effective at ever? Who who the UN? Oh ever. yeah, no. But what I'm saying is, if they do that, and say, <laughs> we're sending peacekeeping to me. Bob, Bob, I get what you're saying, but <laughs> it, it it has to reach uh, saturation for that to actually happen. It, no, it won't. It won't ever. You happen. throw an internet tax out there, there will be such a backlash, and people will be oh, building yeah. right. building private networks. But believe, mark, mark my words, that they will try to do that. The Mex- now. You know what the big they thing? Will absolutely try to do speaking that. Speaking of which, bad segue. But the Mexican cartels, you know what their thing is now? Kidnapping like cell phone tower guys. They're building their own private. Yeah. Cell, oh right. Cell. They're doing their own. They're doing their own dark new. Net. That's been going on for like four or five years. Years. Oh, they want their own dark net. Is yeah, yeah, is? yeah. They're, they're, so they like kidnap the guys in the cell towers, and make them build their their quote unquote wow. underground yeah. cell network, so no one can track their crap. <laughs> yeah, like all the major cell companies, like it's there's no uh, money in drugs. Uh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. No. No. All right. Well, hey, uh, we are actually believe it or not up against our first break already. <laughs> we will be back. Uh, we got Adam uh, in here from the Deluxe Entertainment Expo. We was in there a couple uh, weeks shows ago, ago during the debacle. Yeah, during the, during the technical. So uh, yeah, we'll come back with him and Brightwing, and uh, this is the IT and the D show. We'll be right back it in the day so. read meet listen networking detroit one beer at a time at brightwing our mission is to make sure that every it professional we place is aligned with the values and environment of their future employer we're not happy unless you're happy brightwing is looking for talented and passionate dot net java and mobile apps developers looking to take their careers to the next level Say hello and check out today's hottest jobs at gobrightwing.com slash jobs. That's go, B-R-I-G-H-T-W-I-N-G dot com slash jobs. In the year of our Lord, 1811, on March the 17th day. The Feast of St. Patrick. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. We are back. The IT in the D show this week presented to you by Brightwing. I love my music. 
It's it's they actually did a good job today. Don't hurt uh, yourself patting yourself on the this back. This is uh, we're we're here live in the Robert Eggs studios. I had a good time doing this one. So, it sounds good. It sounds, it sounds we're good. here live in the Robert Eggs studios. <laughs> 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 I will keep talking until you beautiful all shut Midtown, up. Detroit, Michigan. This I is, apologize. Um, this is Bob the sales guy here with uh, David Geek, Jeff of Voice of Reason, the whole crew from Brightwing, and uh, we have a um, Adam from the Deluxe Entertainment Expo showed up. He was here a couple weeks ago, and we lost our entire show. We lost our interview with Ty Mock. Uh, we lost it, like three quarters of the show. Yeah, and it was like. It was yeah, we like had a, jumped we had a ball was, that show. Yeah, we didn't get the intro. So we said, you got an open invite anytime you want to come back. And lo and behold, he's... Uh, he took us up on it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome imagine, back, sir. I'm imagine. shameless, yeah. So the Deluxe Expo, and, and I guess for those that missed it last time around, it is uh, the end of this month. It is the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Ten days. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, it has. It started off as the world record uh, people dressed like Ninja Turtles. Yep, uh, world's largest gathered people dressed Ninja Turtles. Exactly today, two years ago, was the second time they broke the record. Okay. In Mall of America on St. Patrick's Day. And it's kind of morphed from that into a... Ridiculous event. Yeah. like a, I mean, it's almost like a mini Comic-Con. Like, you've got pop culture folks coming. You've got wrestlers. You've well, got MMA B, guys. Instead of B-movie actors like Comic-Con has, they was bringing in fighters and karate guys and MMA. Yeah. 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 Like instead of Ian Ziering sitting there all alone, we're going to see, you know, Virgil and they're sitting actually, there all alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they're actually, a lot of people are like, you got Virgil. Like, well, yeah. they're actually doing stuff, too, right? You're, I mean, we're doing workshops and yeah, workouts. workshops. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're going to have a ring. They're going to be able to do, like, live ex- – the guys are going to do, like, training expos. Um, they're going to have uh, – you got more stuff than Comic Con puts on, and so you know, in, instead of a room, you guys have like a whole event. So yeah, yeah. Not we're gonna have two hundred and fifty dollars for a signature. Yeah, we're gonna have panels. No signatures are more than thirty bucks. I'm getting people complaining about that. They're like, I don't have twenty five bucks to get in twenty five bucks for an autograph. I'm like, well, then don't come. Then shut don't up. come. Shut up. Yeah, I'll give you a sound drop for them. <laughs> exactly. you know, I don't have I don't have a thousand dollars to buy a new TV. Well, then you don't get a new TV. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how this works. As you complain about it on your iPhone. Exactly. Right. If you want to meet someone? They'll find a way to get money. Right. And that's the hardest thing. He's telling people, hey, you know, we got everything going on. They're like, what times or stuff? I'm like, it's all day. Yeah, it's just there. It's the weekend. That's how it goes. Yeah. Or our favorite line, go read our damn website. <laughs> <laughs> how yeah. novel. I've got a calendar and everything on there, but they still keep calling me and asking me questions and stuff. The bare minimum has got to be a four original color masks, uh, red, blue. Orange or purple, and it's got to have a shirt, a green shirt with a shell on the back. You and you said you've got, you know, you were, you were doing a run of like a thousand shirts. Yeah, I did them today. So yeah, they'll be there. So tired. Hey, did one twelve <laughs> pizza ever call you? Nope. So I, I gave the the corner pizzeria by my house. They make the best New York style that I've had in town. I gave me your number just to give you a holler. I appreciate it. Because I'm gonna probably just do is just have a bunch of call a bunch of pizzerias, tell them donate twenty pizzas, donate ten if they can, and just have it like that. Because I've been trying to get pizza sponsors since August. Oh my God! Wow. Why is that such a tough crowd? It should not be that you hard. You think you can't get like it's someone pizza to, for crying out loud? No, if you get like a thousand dollar sponsor, you get two hundred pizzas from Little Caesars. How tough is that? Yeah, I'm just you know, get a hundred hot and be fine. Uh, right. All right, we, 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 got, we, got a, we got a call coming in a second. <laughs> oh. I, I thought you saw something I didn't. Uh, um, he, so, he actually did, but it was on his phone. Right. <laughs> yeah, no. My so, soundboard's checking today. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, over over the autographs and all the expos and all, you're actually going to have comic book guys, artists. You're going to have... It's going to be a one-time event. You know, I've, I've decided I don't have the energy and effort to do a second one. There's just... I don't know how to top next year unless I bring Chuck Norris to the Rock in. Um, that would be cool. Oh. Chuck Norris, $80,000 that goes to the charity. Get out wow. of here. So That's it goes a lot of sponsors. Kicking, kicking drugs of America. <laughs> Stupid wiener Chuck Norris. Come on. Wants eighty thousand dollars. He's seventy four years old. You know he, he could re- he could have his own event. You know he had a reverse vasectomy uh, eleven years ago and he's got twin kids? What? <laughs> he's got twin eleven year old kids, boy and girl. Only you would know that. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a Chuck Norris facts, so you would know. You got a collar. No, I don't. Oh. I thought I seen a face. <laughs> I thought I seen a face thing. <laughs> I'm sixty four. I'm gonna get a reverse vasectomy because I'm Chuck Norris and I can going to make you even more popular. Well, and the best part is you're Chuck Norris. You don't even need to go through the operation. You just will it to happen. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that was like low-hanging fruit. No, so pun, no that? pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> so uh, what's the uh, what's the URL to get to there? What's the what the dates? What's the, Where is it at? Gibraltar Trade Center, Mount Clemens. D-L-U-X-E-X-P-O.com. Please get your tickets in advance. I went to Indiana Comic Con this past weekend. They turned away 2,000 plus people. What? They had one line to buy tickets. No, no one pre-ordered oh. because there was no discount. What a cluster! Sounds like an XICW show. <laughs> and it sounds like it sounds like Comic-Con. Comic-Con. Yeah, Motor City Comic Con. But they yeah. had like I'll show you pictures afterwards. They had so much empty space, and the ticket sales was inside the show, 
And it was just, they had the, the mar- right, here we go. marathon running through Indiana. Hey, this is the IT and the D show. Who we got? Uh, this is Ernie Reyes. Welcome. Thanks Ernie for calling Reyes, in. How, are we, how are we? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for calling in. So uh, you're coming out for the Deluxe Expo at the end of the month. I am. I'm excited and looking forward to it. So what are you, I guess, what, what's, what's bringing you out here? What are you pushing? What are you promoting? What, what, what are people coming to see you for? Um, well, I don't know why they're coming to see me other than, uh, <laughs> other than uh, Master Deluxe over there is telling everybody to come see us. So we're there, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be reunited with uh, the cast of The Last Dragon, which is the first martial arts film I ever made. Uh, with uh, Ty Mock and Glenn Eaton. Uh, um, and so that's kind of a very special moment to me, you know, 30 years later um, as, as an actor years. to kind of go back to, to the first oh my God. I, I, I just made. died a little Hang inside. Seriously, guys. 30 years ago? Me too. Yeah. Yeah, that was 30 <sighs> years ago. Yeah, unreal. <laughs> wow. So, uh, you know, and there's going to be a martial arts tournament and uh, an expo with lots of other, um, you know, athletes and different celebrities. So, it's going to be a great time. I've actually come out to um, a few of the martial arts schools, the Lux Karate and Great Lakes Taekwondo uh, last year. Had a great time. And, um, you know, Adam told me about the event that he was having, and I was really stoked to, to be a part of it. And it's kind of grown into this, this, this big thing. Uh, I believe that there's going to be a Guinness uh, world record set for the most amount of people dressed up uh, as Ninja Turtles. Yep, we were just, yeah, we were just cool. yakking about that. Yep. So uh, I'm always, you know, uh, I, I'm always thankful to be part of anything uh, that has to do with the Ninja Turtles. It was a, it's such a great uh, thing that I've been involved with. And, um, and now, you know, some 20 years later, Kevin Eastman, who's a great friend of mine, uh, the creator, co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is going to be there. So we'll get to spend some time, hang out with him, and uh, meet some of the fans of the, the Ninja Turtles. So it's, it's going to be a, a great week, and I'm really looking forward to it. Now, are you still active in fighting? Because I was just reading. I go, I didn't, uh, I didn't know you were in strike force. You uh, have an undefeated record, 3-0. Uh, and oh. Are you still active fighting, or is that this just uh, old times or part-time now? Yeah, no, that's uh, those days are many moons ago. Um, and, uh, I mean, I still train all the time, but uh, as far as competitive fighting goes, uh that's something in the past. I mean, you can tell people I, I on the street for for a while. We did it, but uh, not looking to get my head beat in. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you could you could say you retired undefeated. No one's going to question you, right? Even though it's three. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm an undefeated champion. Are you kidding me? This is only three fights, <laughs> right? No one has to know that. <laughs> Yeah, just say undefeated. Just forget the three and zero part. Exactly. Yeah, I, won, I won my first fight and I never went back. Undefeated, and, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm done. Listen, no, been there, done that. Outstanding. Right. So, I mean, are, are you going to be bringing like you know merchandise with you? Is are there things that people you know should be bringing? You know, for, I mean, I, I know there's... have some cool photos okay. from uh, from the Last Dragon and Ninja Turtles, and uh, maybe something from the Rundown with the Rock, and uh, maybe some T-shirts and stuff like that. So, uh, I'll have a few little few little fun things that uh, people might in- be interested in. Getting. And I completely forgot you were in Red Sonja. That's one of my uh, one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> that is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Brigitte Nielsen. That's yeah, your exactly. guilty pleasure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Brigitte Nielsen. You, you can't hate on her when you know she was twenty years old. <laughs> Uh, no, but that was a great film also to work on. No, you can't and, even uh, hate on her now. She married Flavor Flav for the one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes things go up and some things, things go down. <laughs> yeah, we actually had a, a good, funny Flavor Flav experience out here, Bob and I, at, at a friend's birthday party, so we're, we're all uh-huh. good. <laughs> well, he opened up. He opened up uh, flavors chicken and ribs, or uh, ribs and waffles, or chicken and yeah. waffles place. So, like, yeah, he uh-huh. had a. He was doing his new TV show, and we ended up having a, a, a f- going to a filming and having a going to a house party. He was hosting. So yeah, it was. So listen, listen. Nobody can hate on Flavor Flavor. No, no. Public Enemy. It's like my old, one of my old time favorites. Uh, I love. I love all that, and I, I love him. I think the the show that I saw him with Brigitte. 
was, was gave me quite a few laughs. But uh, no, don't get me wrong. You gotta love Flavor Flav. He was surprisingly nice. We thought he'd be a little crazy, a little you know cracked out. You know, he was one of the nicest people <laughs> I ever met. Honest no, to God, he was a great guy. And hey, hey, just to jump in for a sec. So this is the IT and the D show. This is the first time we've happened. We had we have two active callers now. <laughs> how, um, how was that happening? Who else just called in? Hello? Hello, you're on the air. Hello. No, the back Ernest the Cat Miller. That's who it is. Oh, the cat. How you doing, man? Y'all don't recognize my number. What kind of plays is this? <laughs> big superstar, a big superstar like me calling in, and you guys don't recognize my number. I should hang up on you two bombs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it shows unlisted, man. You, you know, you're so big time. I mean, what can we do? <laughs> yeah, I can't give it to everybody. I yeah. can't have everybody calling me in the middle of the night. It said private number. I was afraid it was one of Bob's girlfriends. I, you know, I didn't know. <laughs> <what> I <did>. <laughs> 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 so what's bringing what's bringing you out here to Detroit, man? Man, you know I'm coming out there to work with Doctor D. Lux. Let's see what he got going on. I want, matter of fact, I just want to come and see Detroit. I want to just spend a little time out there, you know, and, and see what kind of guys going on out there. But you know, I'm coming out there to this big event, and hopefully, I can have a good time while I'm out there. Detroit's a good town, man. We'll we'll get some hot spots for you to hit, man. There's good food, good people. I think you're gonna leave, and it gets a bad rap, man. But you know, when once you leave, everybody everybody falls in love with this town. So we're looking forward to having you out. Hey, you remember? I'm a I'm a, also a wrestler. We came to Detroit many times. Detroit's no, no. a big town. Michigan's a big. Big town for uh, wrestling. See, you're, big you're, wrestling fans out there. You're talking to the wrestling junkie right here, man. I'm, I've been a fan since birth. Now, I know exactly who you are, what's going on. I know about yeah. your background. <laughs> I've followed you since you came into WCW. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm marking out a little bit here talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, so, you know, we just, I, I used to have a good time coming to Michigan, man, anywhere. I'm in Cadillac. Man, we've been everywhere, man, to going to Michigan. So, you know, to me, it's going to be fun. I've been there before. There's a lot. I have a lot of fans there, and I look forward to seeing them all. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of people know you played a big role. I mean, you, you've been you've been up and down the whole spectrum being in movies. I mean, you played a big role in The Wrestler, um, one of my favorite movies. Uh, with uh, how, how was that filming with Mickey Rourke? Man, you know what? It, it, it was really, really fun, man. It was different. It, but it was fun, you know. I mean, you got to kind of play the character and play the job as a real job. So you know, I, I knew the ins and outs about it. But when I got to working with big name actors and a big name director, and it was just fun. You know, I had a great time doing it. Well, yeah, but I mean, it shows the dark side of wrestling, right? Because I mean, we just did. I'm involved with the local indie scene here in Detroit. We just I, didn't. Hey, to, Bob, give me just a second. Yeah, so, yeah. Hey, Ernie, I don't, I don't want to keep you hanging on here, man. And so I, I will. No We'll, we'll cut you. Is well, there? Listen, I, I hope to see you guys. Uh, you know, when I come into town, and I uh, hope everybody comes out. It's going to be a great, uh, you know, great event. We'll, we'll absolutely be there. Is, actors, it's going to be a lot of fun. Is there a website or anything people can find out more about you at? Uh, no. Okay then. <laughs> but, uh, you know it's 2014, I was right? Say, you know it's 2014, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'll, you I'll tell you what. Me, uh, on Twitter at Ernie Reyes Jr. Um, and Perfect. that pretty much leads you to where you need to go. Well, I'll tell you what, when you come to Thank town, you, we'll talk uh, about getting you hooked up on the website. I'm doing good. Hello, too. Look forward to seeing you. How are you doing, sir? All right, I'm, I'm doing good. All right, well, I better get off the phone here before I crash. Uh, I'm calling you guys from the car. I almost got ran off the road. So. Nice. All right, well, thanks no, for calling in. I really appreciate it. So the cat, right. yeah. So we were we were just talking. I'm involved uh, in the local indie scene here in Detroit. I mean, we just had an event with you know Rhino, Sabu, Jimmy Jacobs. I mean, there's there's a there's a there's a dark side to and it, the the movie The Wrestler. It's kind of sad how you see how these big stars are playing these little uh, little uh, little halls with 250 300 people. It's a lot big jump from or big drop from uh, from playing you know 40,000 seat arenas. But you know what? Now, I'm going to tell you something, man. When you love what you do, which I know a lot of professionals are out there, you know, when, you know not everybody going to make the million-dollar contract. Not every wrestler going to make it to the level of success as WCW or WWE, you know, or, and even PNA. Not every wrestler going to make it to that level. But most of us do it because that's love for it, too. 
Oh no, there's no doubt that those guys are more passionate than anyone I ever met. Um, yeah. And it's just it's great yeah. watching. Like I said, those guys put on one of the one of the best shows I've ever seen as a wrestling fan. And I mean, they did it in front of 300 people in a in a banquet hall in, in suburban Detroit. So now, hats off now, to all those now, guys. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna tell you this right here. You know when when I was on that level with WCW and WWE, the big time they call it. You you getting paid a lot of money. So there's a lot of things that would kind of make the show better that an athlete won't do because if you got hurt, you know you'll miss out on millions of dollars maybe, you know? No doubt. I mean, you 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 blow your knee out, you're done. Then you go to these small shows, man, you get the best of the best because they only doing it because not for the 300 or 400 dollars they doing it because they want to entertain they love that entertainment factor they love to entertain people oh the crowd pop i mean i don't know how you come down from that the crowd pops huge you know it's got to be an adrenaline rush getting everybody cheering for you oh man let me tell you something that was the best man i mean my one of my first shows was in chicago and like i forgot what show was it was a monday night show it was like, man, I had 25,000 people in the palm of my hand. Whatever I wanted them to do, poop, boo me, cheer me. It was like you just control the crowd. And it does kind of, it's addicting. You know, it's like you feel so good. You really, really want to do this more and more. The more you get it, the better you feel. Oh, no you doubt. Know, but, then, but then I'm going to tell you, everybody loved me, man. For a while, I was a good baby face. Everybody loved to cheer me. And, and I was feeling so, you know, you get this, this this kind of manly thing to where you feel great. Like, I'm on top of the world. Everybody loved me. I'm a good guy. Everybody loved me. And then we had a show in Pittsburgh. And that's when all hell fell out. No, in Philly, Philadelphia. That's when all the bottom fell out. Because I went into Philly, man, and as soon as I walked out, the people started throwing trash at me, booing me. And I was like, what's, what's the problem here? Philly is one of those towns where they just love the bad guys. And if they throw batteries at Santa Claus in that town, man, I wouldn't take that too hard. <laughs> hey, so what? Uh, so at the Deluxe Expo, Ernest, what are you doing? Uh, you, you're putting on an expo, or what are you, you training with the with the guys? What are you doing out there? You're gonna have some of my friends there. You're gonna have Goldberg there. You're gonna have a lot of wrestlers there, and you're gonna have a karate guy. You guys may not know, I'm the number one senior fighter in the country right now, forty and over. I'm still competing on the tournament circuit. Uh, so, you know, I, I might put my karate gi on and kick somebody's ass. I might just put my boots on and wrestle everybody. I don't know. I can do so much, man. Just, you know, you got to just to pay your money and get there to see me. I, I'm in. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks for calling in, man. Is there a website or anything people can find out more, more about you at? Hey, man, thanks for uh, having me on the show, man. Just come to the event, man. You guys got the information. We'll see it all there. Meet all my friends. I, I want to meet you two chumps, too, keeping me on hold like this. I'm going to knock something out. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. All right. Thanks, Ernest. See you. Yeah, I'm marking out Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was he was at the back of the day, man. He was he, he was great, man. He was great, Mike. The, with, the, with the wrestling thing, it's not out so much the skill. It's those guys that are good on the mic, yeah, good in front of the, the camera. theatrical, the yeah, theatrical side. This guy was probably one of the top three like voices in front of the mic when you he know gets what happened. What what's that? Eric Bischoff was at a cry school. He was beating up everybody. Yeah, Bischoff was a black belt like two times. Right, and then uh, so Ernest. Uh, Ernest, like, okay, he got his gear on, beat him up, and Eric goes, if you can uh, if you can spar as good as you can talk, if you can talk as good as you can spar, I can make you rich. Yeah, but he could talk better than he could fight. That was, I mean, not wrestling. Wrestling's different. I yeah. mean, karate, I can't, you know, but in terms of wrestling, oh, man, what a great mouth he was. Yeah, he was, that was cool talking to him. Anyway, so, Adam, come back, let's relive the event. Pretend I'm not going to isolate you just saying that a man had a great mouth. Oh, he Pretend did. I'm not- <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> How you say it? That just goes without comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, guys, so I'm just trying to say, come out. This is a one-time event. We're going to have three days of training, working. Cat's going to be fighting on Saturday there. When's the Ninja Turtle thing if we got uh, friends with kids that want to come out for that? Okay, it's going to be, if you come dressed as a turtle, it's only five bucks for kids, um, six to seven. We've got three That's rap. That's Friday, right? Six to seven, March 28th. We've got three rap concerts going to be in that hour. It's going to be one hour action packed. We're going to have the Fat Boys. We're going to have Partners in Crime. We're seeing the original Turtle Power. They're going to sing Turtle Power live with four turtles we got coming now. Sweet Jesus. And we're the turtle van coming so that was 
be there on stage dancing when we have... I want to see the fat points. <laughs> we're going to have no a guy, the Donatello Michael Buffer, the guy who did the voice Donatello's coming. Yeah. So he'll be announcing everyone's name. Like, next up, we got Goldberg. And then he'll play Goldberg's music. Goldberg will come out. Then we'll have Kevin Eastman come out with the Turtles. I got to see this. So it's going to be a whole... You know we're going. It's going to be oh, one yeah. whole Zoom. Yeah, of course we're going. Uh, no, I honestly, Kevin. Then Saturday is just going to be the, the basically the the comic floor, the show, the expo. Half that and half trick ride tournament. But we've also got okay. now since last time we talked, we didn't have Glenn Eden, and um, Glenn Eden. He's the uh, Johnny U from uh, Last Dragon. Oh, 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 shut up! Seriously? Yeah, he's coming too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Ernie was saying it's the first time it'd be a Last Dragon reunion of all three. I, dude, I'm going to be such a nerd at that show. Except for Show Enough. Show Enough can't be there. No, he no. really can't. That would no. be different by <laughs> than every other day. How? No, <laughs> no, you don't understand Last Dragon level nerdery with me. You don't. You you don't. Like it it goes like when Timeot called into the show. <laughs> you could have, if you could have we, we bottled could, their did you nerdery. Squeal like a little girl. I uh, might as well. A, have. a little bit. We could have just canceled the show after that night. <laughs> right. Had we actually had the recording. Dave right. did a lot of hee 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 hee. You heard it. it I got I got a lot of man crush. Talk about man. I'm making it married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, all the running jokes about yeah, he's now the emergency contact in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Much, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then you're going through you're madly scribbling down his reeling the sinks. We're right. running up on a break at him. You're going all the way through Sunday. What's going on Sunday? Same thing. Jake Snake Roberts, people like that. Ernest will be teaching a karate workshop. Jake Snake will be teaching a wrestling on Sunday. So Friday and Sunday, we've got hands on physical workshops. You can be a fan, you can be a real wrestler. You've got to learn stuff. We've got Ken Anderson teaching wrestling workshops. Ernest the Cat teaching wrestling workshops. Kung, we got Rhino coming out. He's going to be having an autograph table there. Uh, we're going to have Kung Lee from the UFC. Uh, Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash will be autographing. Hey, uh, he's not, he's not going to acknowledge the whole Ninja Turtle thing, is he? He was Super Shredder. I know, I know, but he is, he's not going to... I think that's part of the reason why he's coming, because he's going to have two different fan bases, WCW yeah, and absolutely. Detroit and the Turtles. It, it won't be like Mark Hamill, who never talks about Star Wars ever. Right? <laughs> well, it's like Cindy, it's like Cindy Morgan, right? Uh, Lacey Underall's from Caddy yeah. Shack. She was in Tron, and then you go get her autograph. She goes, which one, Caddy Shack or Tron? I'm like, really? Really? Yeah, who knows you from Tron? <laughs> really? <laughs> Other than Dave, who knows right? you from Tron? Yeah, well, <laughs> you're Lacey Underalls. <laughs> but yeah, we got some of everything. Family, kids, you know, we're, we're trying to do it now. We're we got, we got kid prices because we after see after seeing Indiana Comic Con, I don't want it to be the same zoo. You know, there were so many people turned away sad. I drove there five hours. Now, luckily, I found a ticket in the garbage like Willy Wonka, and I got a wristband. I got the golden <laughs> ticket. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, I got. Then I ended up trading my wristband with somebody else we can get in with. They drove with me because. He puts on an event in April, but we well, the want- Michigan Comic Con's a cluster too. The last last year we went, if we didn't have was there a line passes, around the building, literally worse. Yeah, if we, oh, have- if we wouldn't have been there with the wrestling guys. We would have like just said, oh, never you guys, we're going. Yeah, home. we had to never like, cut again. through traffic, drive up curbs. Wow, it was awful dogs and cats living Dude, together. Yeah, yeah, Expo. Yeah. Com, don't the streams. Don't I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, so it is. It's DeluxeExpo.com. dot com. At least um, the venues. The venues monstrous. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's 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 okay. Locations right by ninety four. We're gonna have a billboard there, but it just. You know, it's. I'm not planning on doing this every year. It's too much energy. I'm just having a one-time wham and bam. Have a great time. For what it's worth, we said the same thing about our first pink slip party. We're never going to do it again, and now we do twice. You'll, a year, mi- you'll so miss yeah. it and say, oh, "I'm going to do it next year." <laughs> hey, the problem is, I've been traveling across the country for eight months in my car, going everywhere. I've got ten thousand miles in my car now. From last week in Indiana, week before that was a Battle of Columbus, week before that was in New Jersey. So I've been traveling everywhere. Dude, find nerds that'll do that for you. Yeah, get in. in right. <laughs> yeah, well, you should have said we could have got the. Extra ICW guys put on a couple of matches too, uh, you know. Yeah, we next year we'll have a lot of stuff we can we can. Uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we are up against a break though. So thanks, Adam, for that coming out. Yeah, thank, thank, yeah, thanks for coming. This out. is the IT and the D show. We'll be right back. IT and the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. At Brightwing, our mission is to make sure that every IT professional we place is aligned with the values and environment of their future employer. We're not happy unless you're happy. Brightwing is looking for talented and passionate .NET, Java, and mobile apps developers looking to take their careers to the next level. Say hello and check out today's hottest jobs at GoBrightwing.com slash jobs. That's Go, B-R-I-G-H-T-W-I-N-G dot com slash jobs.
This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. And we are back, and we are still drunk. Special St. Patrick's Day edition here of the IT the D show. Raw live here. Are, uh, raw live. Raw radio live. live. In the Raw Radio X Studios. Something. We're so drunk I dropped a Guinness out in the hallway. I'm so ashamed of you myself. Did not. Freshman. I did. Freshman. <laughs> Freshman. Freshman. <laughs> it's so pathetic. We're right here in the Raw Radio X Studios in the loud. Russell Industrial and beautiful Midtown Detroit, Michigan. Uh, this is Bob the Sales Guy here with David Geek, Jeff the Voice of Reason. Uh, Adam has left the building <laughs> after the euphoric uh, kind of yeah, are, are, you, are you down from your Cloud Nine? Yeah, I'm all right. Are you down to okay? 80s Wrestling Avenue? Yeah, yeah, I want to go over Ernest, remember me? I talked to you on the radio, man. Let's hang out tonight. I'll take you to the... D- yeah. You know. no. Gotta be like me with Dirk Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Dirk Starbucks Hitler. at Starbucks. Right. Having a Starbucks. Yeah. So we have the uh, the entire brain wing, uh, pretty much entire brain wing office pretty much. here live in the studio. Who's you guys the- have been so patient with us. You haven't... No peeps. You brought all this. Al- you brought Guinness. And Thank you very Easter. much for the Guinness, even though I dropped one. <laughs> Gary's very napping. Polite. How did yes. you drop a Guinness? I'm He's an, a freshman. I'm an idiot. But, but thank you very much. I think they took your guess. Irish card away out in the hallway. Pretty much, yeah, they did. So I guess let's. So Brightwing is out at GoBrightwing.com, and you guys are great. You were one of the sponsors of our event on Thursday night. Um, so what is like? What are you guys hunting for these days? Like, what is Brightwing? I mean, obviously, the commercial is playing during the breaks. Uh, so you know the usual Java .NET mobile app dev, all and, that fun and stuff. And we hear that you guys make fun of recruiters looking for Java .NET. Well, it's a purple unicorn. Right? No, it's, it's .NET yeah. mobile app dev. That's yeah. everybody. Yeah. That's yeah. We get. I have a note all the time going, hey, got do, a do .NET know, opening. Do you, know, can you, do you <laughs> happen to do, know? Do you know any iOS developers? <laughs> yes, I do. Are they looking for a job? No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, they're rampantly avoiding hiring right. in anywhere at this point. They're they're all 1099ing everywhere. Exactly. But anyways, anyways. anyways. So, I mean, I, so how is, you know, we had, uh, you know, you guys were in before, and we had George in with us, and that was really cool. So, I mean, what's what's new at Brightwing? I mean, how are things going? What's What's going on? Well, we're very busy. Uh, We have uh, a a lot of opportunities for people looking to change their careers, uh, elevate their careers. Uh, Mobile platform is very, very hot. It's been and it will continue to grow and and be very strong. So uh, Android developers, uh, we've got opportunities right now. I mean, do you see a saturation point for it? Go to your phone and call. (laughs) Yeah. Do you see a saturation point for mobile app dev? Is it getting to the point where, I mean, where where do you see it or what, in what time frame? Saturation as far as uh, I mean, too much as far talent? as hiring. Yeah, I mean, too much. Uh, all of a sudden, everybody's screaming for it. Everybody's going to get trained on it. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a breaking point where, oh, don't need them anymore. Or, oh, got too many. I mean, do you, do you see that happening anytime soon? Oh, uh, no time soon. No. No, because uh, it's it's not just quick and loans, places like that. It's hospitals. It's any business. They're looking at a mobile. Oh, yeah, everybody uh, has platform. to have an app now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a me too thing, whether it's valid or not. But even hospitals want to have a, a mobile app so you can make an appointment with your doctor or uh, get ratings on physicians. I mean, there, there's so many ways to... So, but then it's not just mobile app dev. I mean, you know, when right. you start talking about hospitals and insurance companies and all that right. fun, happy who uh, you've got to start worrying about HIPAA compliance and all that nonsense. Right. So, I mean, are there, like, certifications people ought to be looking at? Are there, you know, or just experience and backgrounds people should have? Well, I think uh, what the the companies, the organizations we work with, people need to have something published to get something out in an app store, something that's running and uh, not just something you cooked up at home and this looks like a fun little game that I put together. Yeah, all the public repositories. That's well, your which, online resume now for developers. Yeah, which yeah, basically yeah, is all you exactly, need to get yeah. in the Droid store. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's that? It's at the Google Play store. That's all it has to be to get published. It's something I whipped up at home and I just threw it out there. Oh, it's, right. It's yeah. Not, yeah, it's not like the, yeah, the Google store. Yeah, 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 yeah they're... Right, right. Yeah. Google plays a little bit more Wild Wild West yeah. than the iOS store, All right? Yeah. So, uh, so th- no, I think that'll stay that'll stay hot for I think uh, for quite a while, and then um, uh, QA is still uh, really believe it or not. Is Bob's last favorite topic. QA. <laughs> QA. <laughs> pull, pull up, pull up the cricket. No, it'll take All me too long. All being developed's got to be uh, got to be checked out. So no QA from like an automated yeah. testing standpoint, or like people that are like hands on doing it. 
Hands on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Manual testers, uh, people doing automated testing, ready to test scripts. insomnia? Learn QA. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this about the whole mobile dev thing. Um, obviously, we're talking about native apps, but are, are you also seeing a demand for um, responsive web design for companies that already have sites or applications that are out there that don't necessarily need a native app but need something that's optimized for mobile devices, whether it be tablet or phone? I don't know that we're seeing a lot of that. But no? That's our company. Right. Uh, so. I don't know if there's a uh, same same type of demand for that, like yeah. front end type of website design as opposed to actual native iOS. Yeah, or well, front end, a lot of UI, UX, right? Okay, so well, that's user related. Interface, yeah. yeah, user experience, right? I'm always. T- Technicians that I work with say, "Well, it's, it's different, Gary. It's not. There's UI <laughs> and there's UX. There, well, yeah, there is okay, a difference. Yeah, that's a different right? rigor, a different right. discipline. So, uh, but still a, a big emphasis. Sorry, yeah, user interface is coding. User experience yeah. is I don't like blue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why? Why is that button here instead right. of there? Right. You mean <laughs> stuff I would say when I see a website? Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, UI is Bob. Make UX it, is Dave and Jeff. Can right. <laughs> you make this pop? I don't even know what that means, Bob. Mm. Just, yeah. just make it good. But that, I, that button, I just don't like. We hear it. a lot of that isn't in marketing. That, that Can you make this blue just a little bit bluer? Right. Yeah, exactly. like a little like bit more the blue. The same, but different. You know. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like half my clients. <laughs> no, so good. I mean, so, so yeah. So that's. Uh, I mean, that's still going strong. Um, and uh, you know, business analyst security is still very, very strong. Right. So. Uh, uh, now, are you seeing like a lot of companies? I, I guess yeah. so. You know, we we've had this conversation with a couple of different recruiters over the past few yeah. weeks. Like, are you seeing a lot more draw downtown, or or are you still? Or and more to the point, are you seeing candidates that are more willing to go downtown for gigs as opposed to staying in the you know Southfield surrounding areas? Right, right. So yes, and yes. Okay. To your question, so people who are uh, open to going downtown, companies that are there. Uh, I mean, think everybody knows there's more and more activity going in the city, right? Now, is the whole yeah. city tax? thing a drop like are people like or are people like not even aware of that and you have to clue them into it or is it a is it a drawback people to know about I, we don't hear it come up really. Okay. Uh, of course, maybe people are naive <laughs> and they don't know. And yeah, in my experience, I, people I, I, yeah, if they probably know, don't, Oxford people, don't think about Oxford it. Right. People don't even know that there's yeah. a tax in the city. Right. We're close to the roasting so, plant. I want to go there. Right. right. <laughs> so uh, I, you know, people are more concerned about the parking situation, right? Right. Flexible hours and. What if there's a snowstorm? Well, flex hours, it's something I talk about all the time. Right, right. I mean, the 9 to 5 to me is, is kind of, an, not antiquated, but especially in development. Right. There's yeah. no reason that you got to sit in a cube from 9 to 5. Right. Eight, I mean, eight, eight, you see, do you see, you see people moving away from the traditional? Or is it just something, it's still a pipe dream in my eyes? It, it, it depends on the shop, right? But uh, honestly, I think Detroit, we are behind on that. So I think... There needs to be more of a flexible, uh, or more of an openness to, to I keep flexible hearing Silicon hours Valley and that's, working, yeah. working remotely. Because the uh, companies here locally are trying to tout, hey, this is Detroit and it's happening. We've got tech really booming here and there's all this great uh, kind of work environment, which that is true. Mm-hmm. I, I would agree right. with that. But uh, we don't see much uh, flexible working. Yeah, cause, I mean, I hear Silicon Valley, that's the way everything's moving right now. And that's uh, that's who we're competing. Well, unless you're yeah. Yahoo, right. where now they're trying to pull everybody back in. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. Like well. a VC funded firm where they want to actually see butts and seats because they're actually paying for those people. They actually want to see some sort of uh, which is such an ass kind of way of looking at yeah, that. Well, I remember when I worked for the, the for the Japanese firms, right? And uh, the way they the the uh, the old man or the the general manager or the vice president would sit literally in the middle of the room, um, so he could hear everything going on so like and all the departments would be set to and then spread like out a little and then, circumference around like yeah. almost like a, he'd like a circle around him in the middle right. so he could have his eyes mm. and ears on it and he's watching and it was like i'm a sales guy man i'm not supposed to be here yeah, you're, right. yeah you're, you're supposed know. to be out in the field yeah it's like what are you listening for man you know right. it, it is he wanted to know what's going on like you can't even you know his english was so boring you can't understand what i'm talking about you know like, so he's always joking I'm like takashi why are you sitting in the middle you can't even understand what i'm saying he's like, i just want to be here like, but i mean it's it's amazing how the different cultures how they perceive work or how work gets done like for him just being in the middle means i wasn't going to screw around you know what i'm saying right I, at least i that's what i took from yeah it was a perception right. thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, I mean, and that is the same thing when it comes to, you know, the telecommuting thing. And that's what we, we've hit on that a couple times where it, it is that whole butts and seats mentality where if I see you, you must be being effective and functional. If and, I can't see you, you're not working. Yeah, which, oh, for the love of God, drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah. No, but I mean, good to know. I mean, it's, it's good to hear people so, are, are, you know, both that there's more companies looking to hire downtown and there are absolutely. people actually willing to take those gigs. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's surprising people don't bring up taxes. I think they're more interested in these other aspects uh, and, and getting to know the city, right? Once you get them in town, I think uh, people have been very receptive. So. It's the track. I mean, for me, you know, I ca- uh, in Auburn Hills, getting down here, you know, it gets blocked up at uh, 14 Mile, it gets blocked up against 696. Right. Then going downtown, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. The 75 being such a bad, you know, they, they can't they, you know, they either have to do something about it or they can't, you know, they can't keep doing what they're doing, bringing people downtown um, with, with the issues that are going on. It's yeah, and we're still, uh, there's still so much room, right, to develop. So you're thinking, yeah. wow, what if it really gets busy downtown? Yeah. Uh, and it will. I think it's going to get to that saturation point where the generation behind us, yeah. even though as weird as it sounds to say that, are the people that are going to actually want to move into the city. Yeah, yeah and it won't and it won't be a saturation it won't be a saturation level with the city it'll be the saturation level with the highways. Right. right. <laughs> Cuz I mean yeah, I mean you look at you know 75 696 and all that. I mean it, it, they're ridiculous in the morning already. Yeah. yeah. You know trying to get in and out. Yeah. I mean I I mean that's the one you know when I was uh right before I got the year before I got married I wanted to move into the uh, 743 Bobian building. Oh yeah. Above right. Nikki's and Bazooki and across from the the, <laughs> the casino. Bazooki. No, that's where root that's no, where nothing good would have come Yeah, I know, I know. Well, that's where root level was and they had a, like a 7 they had a 2700 square foot loft for like $1600. I don't ever forget. So I said I said a buddy like you could play roller hockey in it. I go let's split it. Just for the year. I go then you're going to get married in a year and then I got to move out. If, you know, if we're going to move in, let's move in. Your friend was strategic. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> then you're going to move all your furniture up here, then you're gonna, you know, right. and where are you gonna park in the mornings? Exactly. You know, the lots. And I, I kind of looked at him like, where are you gonna go get food? You know, because back then there wasn't grocery shopping. Wasn't oh yeah, anything. grocery shopping. Yeah, that was what, go twelve to- years ago. It was a fraction of what what's going on right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I would have still loved like to do it, but yeah, <laughs> in retrospect, glad you know. <laughs> so so healthcare. I, I mean, I guess what other industries are because we hear from different companies that there are different. Um, just different niches that are out there, different industries that are still kind of like having their little pockets of growth and all that fun kind of stuff. I mean, security is good to hear because that's right. uh, mother of God, a hot topic that we keep harping on over and over mm-hmm. and over again. Um, so, I mean, that, that's good to hear. But, I mean, what are, are there any other particular industries maybe that people haven't thought about in the area? Uh, well, you know, telematics, right? Services and vehicles. So okay. uh, our automotive friends, as stodgy maybe as they appear to be, uh, they've actually got this telematics area putting more and more services, infotainment mm-hmm. in the vehicle. And right. uh, so there's mobile apps uh, yeah, that are coming just, into play, yeah, right? Yeah, Apple just released uh, CarPlay. Oh, yeah, okay. it's iOS for okay. the, for the car. Yeah. There you Crickets. go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but don't drive distracted by holding your phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or watch a movie in the dashboard. Well, you have a driverless car, you won't have to worry about it. Anymore. Right. Yeah, that's wait. what I want. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, every time I hear, like, every time I see one of those Audi commercials where, you know, our car makes 4,000 decisions every second, I will never buy an Audi. It'll never happen. Why? I know programmers. Right. That'll never happen. <laughs> Didn't the Google, uh, Google Drive car, whatever it was, drive into Hit a, a donkey? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to the first segment. We were right there. <laughs> well, in, a, in addition to that, and before that, it, like, drove into a uh, crowd of people or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, thanks. well, and speaking of which, there was the whole chaos just that just happened at uh, South by Southwest with yes. the drunk driver plowing into a crowd of folks. And right, nuts. Yeah, uh, and, the, and the show must go on. Yeah, it kind of has to, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, when you're right. putting on a conference that big, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they can the entire city, right? And you can't just shut it down. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess at least what what like what's going on in your world over on that side of the fence? Like anything new and exciting brewing? Anything that you want to jump in about? Uh, well, I guess we're... Other than, hey, you're married, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I'm no longer Lisa Lopez, I'm now Lisa Turner. Um, I guess Turner. it's in, Turner. in Turner. the works, but we are talking to New Horizons about potentially doing an event um, that would help uh, not only veterans, but also civilians, um, you know, learn how to... I guess, what did we talk about today? Create resumes, networking skills, how to use social media to find a job, um, interviewing skills. I guess um, we heard the lady, Christy. Yep. From Christy Rowe, yep. <laughs> Christy Rowe, yeah. From, from New Horizons was talking about how um, the funding for veterans in, in their um, 
getting continuing education, mm-hmm. especially in IT, through New Horizons, um, the funding is there. And um, they're trying to really get the word out to get veterans to get these, get all. Oh, there's a ton of grants yeah. for, for well, vets right now. I saw there was federal uh, money out there for mobile app dev uh search uh-huh. diplomas yes. we have to oh. yeah we got to get on the whole yeah, we need to get on. Oh, there you go get on get on that it seems like there's a lot and really you know her task is really getting the word out and educating people about what are the types of certifications that are really making you marketable today and what's available so <laughs> we're going to be doing that i think uh, coming up in uh end of may beginning of june so, okay. so uh we just met with her today we have a few other meetings set up this week so, so we have something more concrete cool we'll let you know. yeah definitely <laughs> let us know so I, oh God, where do we even dive into? I, I, I'm trying to think job market stuff that I want to harp on. Um, no, you know what? Actually, I'll, let's get your take. What, how, like, how did you think Thursday night went? I mean, that's always good to hear from a sponsor perspective. You know, I honestly, I thought it really went great. Um, anytime I ever met someone, they seemed like they actually knew what they were talking about. And since I'm marketing a lot of what I do at your events, is really route them to who can, will actually be placing them. Because, Traffic cop, yeah. Because, that's, yeah. because <laughs> while I may look at the postings, I do not actually own the postings. The salespeople and recruiters do. So what I'll do is kind of figure out um, what their background is and you know who the best person to talk to. Um, if no one's available, I'll usually just get their card. But you know what? I, I met a lot of people that seemed like they had... And they had... Right. What's it? Uh, all the skill sets for all the jobs that I've been seeing recently, and so I got them to, them to talk to Justin and Jeff. And I love that venue. I don't know about you guys, but that's an abs- I absolutely love that venue. Yeah. And just to me, it, it brings back. I mean, granted, I used to go there when I was 18 years old to the shelter, but I mean, just just to bring back memories. But that, I mean, what a you know. You know, it was packed, but it was breathing room, right? It, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. It didn't. It wasn't annoying. Yeah, exactly. You could walk around without yeah. being. Psyched. It wasn't like a ministry concert where I you know, can't move. <laughs> right. Nice. No, yeah, it was full, but it wasn't crammed. That's yeah. I mean, which which was I yeah. I'll, I'll take any day of the week, especially mm-hmm. with all the feedback we got. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So, and you guys aren't, and, and this is one of the questions that we do here every now and then, like, do you guys, you have offices elsewhere, are you seeing the same kind of stuff that we get every now and then, which is, hey, I'm looking to either move to Detroit or I'm looking to move back to Detroit, and how can you help me out there? I mean, because, I mean, you guys do have, you, know, you guys have a couple of other offices, yes? All right, we have offices in Weston, Florida, like kind of Tampa, yep. Miami area, and then we also have an office in Dallas. So we've heard, um, I mean, I've talked to a lot of recruiters. Um, I think it was Melissa placed someone who was moving either from Oklahoma to Michigan. Um, we, we've had people who, you know, we've come in contact with from one way or another, job boards, networks, right. whatever, like word of mouth, um, that have been, you know, we moved away from Michigan X years ago. You know, I'm kind of looking to come back. My family's there, you know, for what, some reason or another. It seems to be a pretty common story these yeah. days. Yeah. You know, now that things are getting a whole lot better. Yeah. Is that a t- <laughs> Is that a tough sell? Like, um, like, what's the relationship that you guys have between the different offices? Like, hey, you know, we have a fantastic iOS position here in Detroit. Would you want to move <laughs> here from Tampa? No. Well. I mean, no, I mean, you do see more and more people that are ready to come back, you know? Right, and I think right. especially, you know, talk to a lot of our recruiters. They're big Detroit fans. They have a soft spot in their far, heart for people that want to move far. back. Right. What? So you do see more of that happening. Wow, that was good. Sorry if that voice is wrapped. <laughs> No, but you do but, see a lot more people now, more than ever, I think. So there is an oh, interest there, yeah, yeah, and the absolutely. candidate side of things as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, people, whether they've been in Florida, Texas, wherever, uh, right. there's a link there, right? And uh, we've had success, I, I would say a fair amount of success with people who find out, hey, there's a job back here in Michigan, people in Pennsylvania, again, sunny, whatever, southern states. Right. People have a link, they realize, hey, there's something to come back to. They well, didn't feel, the, they feel like it's time to get back on board here? So didn't this? I uh, just read a study, something about Detroit being like the third best in terms of uh, salary versus cost of living. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. yeah. You go to New York. I mean, yeah, the guy. Dollar, the dollar goes a long way here. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, the right. guy, the guy in Silicon Valley that's my peer, and the guy right. in New York that's my peer makes my salary. So right. I can't complain too much. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Not being, at all. being living, uh, living out here. Yeah. Right. So no, and it's 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 true, and it's I mean, like I said, I mean, it's it's one of the things that hits our hits our group maybe eh, once every couple of weeks. We'll have somebody that'll say, hey, you know, I I, I wasn't, you know, I, I used to live out there, or I'm thinking about right. moving out there. Yeah. What's out there? What's next? And I, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe that's the reason why we have listeners in all fifty states at this point. It's <laughs> anything's possible, right? <laughs> so uh, people wanting to find stuff. So it is. So you're at Go Bright. Ah, whew, 
Wow, you know I can't about. talk. Go brightwing.com. Go I think you need another beer. They have another bishop. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah, that might actually make my tongue work. Uh, and it's gobrightwing.com <laughs> slash jobs. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we're totally going to isolate that one. <laughs> what, what you need to weep, Hale Face? You don't get raw recordings. <laughs> oh, Captain Sunboard is going to be a little possessive now. <laughs> um, and it, so it's gobrightwing.com slash jobs. I mean, is there a number that people can call if they want to touch base? I know our Michigan Michigan. Two four eight five eight five four seven five zero. Okay. April out on the wow. number. Wow. The, the, the girl who couldn't, couldn't talk free. until I yesterday. Know. Right. The Michigan, yeah. not the toll free. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. All right, well too, we're actually bounced up against a break, so let's let's get that out of the way and then we'll go back and we'll we'll find out why the angry, angry hippos are so angry uh, from Russ out there in Ethiopia. Hungry. Uh, no, no, apparently oh, they're angry and is hungry. what you were saying. Well they're angry. Oh, they're angry. They're angry, angry. About being they're angry because Ethiopia. they're hungry. So they're hangry? They're hangry. <laughs> <laughs> they might just be angry because they're in Ethiopia. April was so hangry today. And we're still going to isolate that. (laughs) Exactly. All right. This is the IT in the D show. We'll be right back. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. At Brightwing, our mission is to make sure that every IT professional we place is aligned with the values and environment of their future employer. We're not happy unless you're happy. Brightwing is looking for talented and passionate. .NET, Java, and mobile apps developers looking to take their careers to the next level. Say hello and check out today's hottest jobs at gobrightwing.com slash jobs. That's go, B-R-I-G-H-T-W-I-N-G dot com slash jobs. is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. That was actually the song I was talking about. <coughs> and we are back live, oh, was it? Yeah. IT in the D show here in the Robert Oaks studio. That's Dropkick Murphys. You know yes, what? That's, that's uh, what it was. thank you. I, I got to give it to the Irish. You know, their lullabies in, not so much. Their Irish rock, though, you can't go wrong. That, no. That's good stuff. Yeah. It's uh, that last song was awesome. Pushing a good, just I want to go boil somebody's ass mood. Boiled potatoes and carrots and the the rock. I, I could, you know, the music good. Yeah. I, I, you know. So you're saying you don't like Anya? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So yes. Yeah, so this is a uh, segment four. Very special St. Patrick's Day ep- uh, edition of the IT and the ep- show. Ep- edition. Ep- edition. I stuttered yeah. again. Come on. Look at all the alcohol you got on the table. You're going to give me grief. <laughs> Come on. Epic edition? Was it epic? So, yeah, we still have Brightwing in for uh, for the fourth. Uh, Russ here. You have been the most patient gentleman. RD. I know. It's amazing, right? Yeah, right. It's crazy. Hey, Brightwing's hiring recruiters, by the way. I think yes. I wanted to talk about that. They do? They do. They do. Yeah, yeah. Gary does. What kind? The few, the proud. The IT, uh, IT and or uh, engineering recruiters. What kind of experience? Uh, like new ones, experienced ones? It could be relatively junior uh, uh, or even uh, fairly senior. Okay. So you get the whole gamut, so you're so, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, full time and uh, all the beer you can drink. <gasps> really? Sure. Bob, you want to be a recruiter? I suddenly want to be a re- yeah, yeah, you'll go out of business in a year if Bobby becomes a recruiter. <laughs> right. right Wing does mimosas like at least two days a week. It'll be like the ending scene of Strange Brew. <laughs> <laughs> Me at the bottom of the kettle. <laughs> Bob at the bottom of a vat of beer. I win. <laughs> Listen, this place makes 100,000 bottles because I drink 42 and I'm the asshole. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. <laughs> so, Russ, I guess, you know what, Let, let's dive in, man. So you're back in town for a couple weeks from Ethiopia, and for right. some dumbass reason, you decided to come waste one of your nights with us. I was asked to, so I decided to come in. <laughs> well, yeah. So what, uh, so how, the dude, what, uh, wow. So I just want to know what the hell Ethiopia is like. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the well, biggest they, question. They, they make really well, good beer. What so. I learned, so we, we got together for dinner yesterday, and so I learned that there are city mice and country mice. That that was Russ's analogy. What the hell is that? Is that a, is that a country song? No, there's a, I, I live 
uh, the house I stay in is in Addis Ababa, which is a city. Okay. And what their goal is to be the, is the Dubai of Africa. So ah, we very have, upscale. It's we have three G networks there, and we have all that. Uh, there you go. That sort of business there. But then you can drive 15 kilometers outside the city, and you are in BFE, where people live in huts and don't have electricity. Better shape like boobs, because we got the Christmas card. Like, hearts, hearts are shaped like boobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can go out there, and you can, in fact, get chased by hippos. I've been chased by a hippo in a boat. No. You've been chased by a hippo in a boat. Yeah, apparently hippos They're are violent. like the hippo wasn't in the boat. I was in the boat. But the hippo wanted to chase us. Yeah, it was very Miami Vice. The hippo was in one speedboat chasing Russ in the other <laughs> speedboat. <laughs> Had sunglasses on. But, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to picture this. All, the, all, no, the, all the ether you hope you hate, you want to throw. I just want you to know that for the past, since I've been there, every single day, it's been right. 78 degrees and sunny. While you guys have as opposed to your polar vortex. As opposed to negative 24. Well, and, you know, uh, but here's the counterbalance. Like, how, how many bombings have taken place there's, in the town? There's only been one. There's only <laughs> one. We're, we're at zero. We <laughs> win. <laughs> oh, I don't, I, I don't believe that for a second. one bombing in Detroit. Yeah, um, but he, he's got the McDowell's there. He's got the... the yeah, exactly. Yeah, the McDowell's. Yeah, and, and the malaria. And all, right, all, the, right. all, the, all the good M you words he has to worry about. In Addis, there is no malaria. Because it's too high. It's too high. But when we go out of the city, we have to take malarial, anti-malarial malarial drugs and things like that. And we spend a lot of time mm-hmm. outside the city. Wow. So, so it's no. like it's like being in an all inclusive resort in Mexico and like traveling outside the. That's the, the what walls. I say. Yeah, you do not leave exactly. the property. You do not leave. <laughs> right. Exactly. But it's you know I, I'm confused about the famine that they had because it's everything grows there. They have a. a it's a sand. Third, a, nothing. Nothing no, grows no, 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 in sand. No, no, I thought the gorillas. The gorillas block the trade routes. That's why there's famine. <laughs> right. No, not right. gorillas. Like. Ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, like G U E R. I know. Well, that's What's the fa- 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 Yeah. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> goofball. They did. They, they, yeah, the gorillas uh, from the mist came down. <laughs> <laughs> so thank so you, Holly. Thank bridge. you, Hollywood movies. Some people Silver killed bridge. their emperor, and then there's some communists took over and everything like that. But everything grows all the time. There are avocado trees, mango trees, papaya trees, banana trees growing like weeds in the ditch. So what is it? Yeah. So no, nobody does anything with them? They just grow on the vine and no, die? Go, so has Sally them. Struthers been lying to us for 30 years? I is that what you're telling that me? That whore's been lying. No, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, my, you know what my favorite is? Here's the cameraman going, look how sad they can't eat. Look how sad they have no food. It's like, give them a sandwich. You can't give them a sandwich. Like that. <laughs> you're filming them. You know you've got the craft food truck right behind <laughs> you, you lying bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look give how sad it is. Something. Like they're just there watching because we it's good for television. We watch them starve to death. You, well, and yet you're the guy who says you want the Mars One Explorer to happen and you want it to be a reality show because you want to watch guys die on Mars. I don't want to watch guys. <laughs> no, I just said it'd be the most watched show ever. I don't want to watch it. You just want to know where they poop. No, it's the people that watch Dancing with the Stars and all that BS crap. I don't watch that junk. Uh. Those people go, oh my God, someone just died on Mars. We have to watch it. Talk Who's about dating segues. The Bachelor? Actually, I, I, well, it, here's a great segue for you because uh, Jeff just mentioned Bob's fascination with poop. Um, one of the more interesting photos what? that Russ... What? Abel does not like potty talks. No, one of the more interesting photos that Russ has shot over was the guy carrying the... The big giant backpack. That was a woman. It was a woman that carrying, was a woman. just carrying bundles of poop. Well, it's it's what? It's uh, I'm sure it's fertilizer. Bur- no, it's fertilizer. no. People burn that for fuel. They get cow shit and goat shit or whatever, and they mix it with dried grass. <laughs> Lift embargo. Dry it. We <laughs> use that joke way too much. <laughs> they dry, they dry it, and it's actually a, a pretty good fuel. Ah. Barter town, right? Pretty much barter town. So I mean, like in the grand scheme of things, I guess just to get a, a little serious. So what what is a typical Rust day in Ethiopia? Like what? Yeah, why is the navy there? Yeah, exactly. Why is the navy in a landlocked African country? That's, no. not, my right. first, that's not my first. landlocked country. Um, it really depends on what we're up to. Um, if we're in uh, if we're in town, I have a lot of flight clearances to do. Um, we have currently have three shooting wars going on down there right now. That right. We're involved in. So well, no, you've been mobilized a couple times to go, yeah, I'm going to be offline no, I mean, for a couple days. Cause yeah, yeah, exactly. So all of the uh, troops that were moving around, <coughs> we handle all the logistics of those guys uh, getting moved around. Um, we live in a safe house. We have a lot of transients, a lot of special people come and stay at our safe house every once in a while. And then they go to embassy. Special, like, clearances or, like, short bus helmet? <laughs> Did he uh, just ask that? <laughs> really? Uh, Get out. Uh, we have a lot of uh, Christians in action that come Dave. You know, hang out with us, and um, those folks save. <laughs> but that's a, p- a pretty typical day. Wait, he did. He, he, it wasn't that you had to go uh, rescue people from a, was it a, a convent? Uh, no, a nun. Uh, she, yeah. A nun who runs an orphanage. <laughs> we had to go pull her because she was down in the... Uh, um, 
Sudanese. Like the Blues region. Brothers. Yeah. yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> she was out in the Sudanese uh, region, and they were starting to kill everybody down there, so we went and pulled her out of there. She's an American nun, so we pulled her, we put her back a few weeks later. Showed 5000 in back taxes. Yeah, exactly. So it's not even <laughs> worth asking who they is because it's just mass chaos, right? It's like every day is a different... Yeah, it's it's very, very different on yeah. a day-to-day basis, so I can get a call and be on an airplane wow. going someplace in a hot minute. But no, honestly, Ethiopia is nice. In the city where I, where I sleep most of the time, I would feel comfortable bringing my kids there. Really? Um, Ethiopians are a lot like us. Except for the roaming donkeys? Except for the roaming donkeys. They get hit um, by a Google truck? Okay, so like, no, see, you're yeah. laughing. That like I laughed for days when he put like there's he posted these photos, just donkeys no, running down the street. You wouldn't believe this. They're homing donkeys. Okay? So these donkeys... They're not just donkeys. They're homing. They're homing, <laughs> they're donkeys. homing donkeys. They don't Home, have wait, any homely? Like, homing. Like, like they're not good like looking? pigeons. Okay. Oh, oh homing. So what does that mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain if they'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, be nice. I'm not nice. <laughs> and okay, he knows so we're never going to shut up. No, 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 shut up. <laughs> so I have a store in town, and you grow papayas out uh, out in the sticks. So Naturally. you load up your five donkeys in the morning with all the papayas. You smack it on the ass, and it comes to my house. No pun intended. Oh. Right, smack it on the ass. <laughs> they even, love, they even use the round. They even use the roundabouts. They come to my place. I give oh. them some sugar cubes, and they're happy. And then when the sun goes down, I kick them out, and they know that they go home and they get fed again. That sounds really so nice. They don't, so, so it's like, like the uh, girls in the town, or are we still talking about donkeys? Okay. <laughs> so it's, like, <laughs> so it's literally, condi- it's literally like conditioned responses, like Pavlov's dog. They, exactly. They know, they, they're following a, they, they a, know a habitual pattern. pattern. They know yeah. if they go here and drag this stuff there that I'm going to be nice to them and give them sugar cubes and carrots and pet them for a minute. Wow. And then I'm going to kick them out, and they're like, well, hell, it's time to go to that other place where they give us sugar cubes. So. <laughs> yeah, and then I have to go get more leaves and but no, papaya really, to bring back. It's it's funny. Ethiopians are a lot like us. They have a 13-month calendar because um, oh, they, okay. they want one. Wait, what? Shh. I didn't, no, I, I, honestly, I didn't know this. 13-month calendar. What comes after December? Um, they have some weird month, and it's actually between August and September. It's a five-day month. That's how they get rid of the 31-day issue. Hmm. Um, I didn't realize that was an issue, but okay. it, it's, it's an issue with them. Their clock is different. They have their um, their midnight is when the sun comes up, hmm. which actually makes a little tiny bit more sense, right? So one o'clock midnight. in the morning is one hour after the sun came up. Hmm. Okay, kind of so like us with the metric that? system. They have their own. They have their own system, and they don't give a shit what the rest of the world does. Kind of like how we are with our metric right. system. Yeah, we, we know that there is a metric system, but we're just not. And, and we know it's perfectly logical and makes perfect sense, but you know, yeah, we're no, not we're doing not, that. Yeah. No. Do that. We're not going to do that. It's pretty uh, mixed between uh, um, Christians, Muslims, and Jews. There's actually a pretty large Jewish population down there. Really? Wow. Yep. And they, don't, thunk it. They, um, they will ask what you are, but it's just for a point of reference because, uh, like the Orthodox people, they have like weird days where they can't eat this. That, right, and that. different silverware right. for different. Yeah. So they'll ask you, but they don't really give a shit. You know? Just gives you gives them the They're opening like talking points. Yeah, anything. they just really don't care, but they'll just just ask. So for now, for, right, for, now. <laughs> for now, yeah, they're 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 going home and making lists. <laughs> yes. um, yes. But no, so you yeah. said one of the bigger issues there is that it's it's a pure cash economy. It's a, it's a very pure. Ca- I had to go buy a television and a refrigerator, um, which wasn't you know it was like I think I spent twenty seven hundred bucks, not not a ton of money. That was uh, eighty five thousand burr. If and I stacked it up in hundreds, burr. it was like this. Burr. Burr. So I'm walking around with this much money. And sometimes you can't get fuel. Sometimes you can't get money. But you you can't pay with anything with a. Uh, so car. there's no Zon machines. There's no credit card. There's no, nothing. The uh, um, the ATMs I use. There's one at the embassy, and that's it. Hmm. So get so you. so if the cash is like literally a stack, like you know this is great radio, but you're like holding up the something that's like two feet tall, right? So it, like an ATM machine like would last like what a day because like if somebody took one yeah. like withdrawal like it would empty it. Yes. <laughs> um, the ATM we have we can only take uh, two hundred dollars out, which is about four thousand burr. <laughs> wow. But everything is. Um, it's the only place I remember I'm actually filthy rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, everything is. Do you sleep in your cash? Uh, I could. <laughs> he's rich. He's richy rich. Right. <laughs> he's, a, he's a room full of dollar bills that he just rolls uh, around in. I'm rich. I'm rich. Right. Russ, that's like 80 bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's nothing. But no, I mean, food is relatively cheap. I mean, actually, food is ridiculously cheap. Um, you can buy. I like mangoes, and uh, mangoes here are expensive. You can buy. Although, apparently, you have to bleach them. No, you don't have to bleach things that you peel. 
Gotcha. But if you're going to eat like a salad, my policy is if I didn't bleach it, I don't, I don't, I don't eat it. I've gotten sick down there, and I don't want to get, I don't want to get sick again. So, but I mean, it's it's uh, again 78 and sunny, polar <laughs> vortex. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to 18 and. Burr. Except in about a week starts the rainy season, and it's going to rain for two and a half months. Like solid. Yes. Ooh. Like Forrest Gump. Right. Yeah, like that. It's going to rain for two and a half months. So, like, how does that work? Rain continues to fall. No, I, under, no, I, I understand <laughs> the atmospheric sure. conditions. Kind of like Bob and flying thing. You know, yeah, no, it is, you know, no. Like, rain works. like from a your world perspective. I mean, it would, I mean, do you guys? I, the yeah, moisture. Do you start the wearing clothes. ponchos <laughs> everywhere? Do you? I, I I own a raincoat and I have an umbrella, so I think I'll be okay. You have an umbrella. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, my understanding is it's. I haven't lived through it yet. It's torrential rainfall. Ooh. Huh. You need an umbrella. I'd rather go like snorkel and then you know, <laughs> like a Bill Murray umbrella with the just live under yeah exactly yeah the little hat band with the yeah, yeah. so it worked yeah I suppose well and the, the other thing you were, we were yakking about was so apparently uh, everybody's over there looking for a visa yes uh, I get I love you you marry me visa visa all the time for men and women <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna isolate that <laughs> yeah uh, so and, and I mean I guess uh, what I, I'm trying to figure out where to go here. Uh, like, what else do you want to yak about when it comes to, you know, your deployment and all that stuff? Right. You know, I don't know. It's a, a lot of things I can't yak about. Obviously. Um, with the deployment. But uh, so far, it's been uh, so far it's been interesting. This is my first time on the continent of uh, Africa. I'm more of an Asia guy. But uh, it's nice. I don't get shot at on a daily basis. That's kind of cool. It's a bonus. That's a bonus. That doesn't happen here. Right. Um, so and, and, and you're you, back at oh go ahead I'm sorry yeah, yeah you're home for a couple weeks and you're heading back yes for how long then uh, September so like six more months okay so what's I guess what's broadband like what I mean you said 3G for the cell phones what's uh, what's a data connection like for for a resident we paid uh, uh, most people have so, um, satellite networks there and it's it's a okay. shit show um, we paid a those l- are exp- expensive though right it's, you're not it's not that expensive that's actually less expensive there we got the fiber through our uh, to the house and I right. think it cost him. Like seven or eight thousand dollars. Thank, thank you, taxpayers, for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank yourself too. So. Yeah, and we can download a movie at our house in um, two weeks. No, about an hour. <laughs> Great. We, we, we gave Russ better access to porn. Great. Right. 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 Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, most of the time, it's uh, when you get out of the city. Um, um, I have to carry a satellite phone. I have an Iridium. Because you just it just doesn't work. Right. Right. So Xbox, I guess, uh, PlayStation I guess, is that pretty prevalent with everybody? No. They can't even afford that. That would be like you having a Rolls Royce. Well, it, they just can't afford that stuff. So I guess I'm confused. Like you keep saying, that, like uh, I had to go buy a, a fridge and a TV, right. and I'm, you know, I'm living in this house. Yes. Are you not on a base? I, no, I, guess we I don't, don't understand that. We don't have a base there. We have an embassy there, but the embassy compound doesn't have an. So you're not actually within any sort of U.S. facility, embassy base, anything. I, I understand we don't have a we're, base there. We're leasing it's the navy, a, but we're no. leasing a house. Okay. Um, and there's it's a house with a compounded razor wire and guards and everything like that. So you have TVs. Safe place. house means four snipers and about 32 mines. Uh, right. No, <laughs> no, no d- nothing. Small like detachment that. of four Marines hanging out. Right. <laughs> yeah. Very small detachment. So, Russ, <laughs> Russ, you have a crew that are uh, reporting to you? Right? Um, our team is only five people. Okay. So we don't really operate in that sort of a um, reporting to thing. I've yeah. only got one guy who I tell what to do. Okay. I've got seven. Is that the guy that comes in and folds the towels in the morning? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wipers. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> Chocolate on your pillow. <laughs> so, yeah, like, what have you? You know, you, so you said the. You know, the, the, the. They're a lot like us, other than obviously a few key differences, like the yeah. calendar and the the clock and all that kind of stuff. Like, what? Uh, what do you think you're going to take away from, or like, what have you picked up while you're over there so far? I picked up some. What have you strength. picked up? <laughs> I haven't picked up anything. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Anything yeah that's, you a, to, that's a loaded question. Yeah, anything you needed a shot for? And then, no. no, I'm not drinking no, out of your beer. No, no. We were actually talking about the prostitutes. I'm I'm, I'm from Flint, Michigan, and I'm used to um, prostitutes being around, right? And they're usually cracked out meth heads who look like hell. Um, down there, there's a lot of prostitutes too, and there it's seriously it's Beyonce and Rihanna and Jada Pickett, these just stunningly beautiful women. 
um, on the sides of the road. And the, the HIV rate is about 40%. Yikes! Well, that's a hell of a crapshoot. Yeah, that's not even <laughs> that's a landmine. <laughs> I was I was about to turn to you and go, "We're going to Ethiopia." And then, no, no. no, we're not going. No, to no we're not going. To <laughs> we're going to the casino and we're betting all on black. That's pretty much what it is. Like. <laughs> the uh, HIV rate there in the general population is just over one percent, which still qualifies as an epidemic. Oh wow, God! They don't really believe in that. They don't really believe in HIV. But what is it like? Oh, okay. Well, that just make I, I don't understand. What, just, what do you mean? Okay, they just don't believe in it. They don't acknowledge it, right? Yeah, no, they just don't believe it exists. They think it's some bullshit. Right. So what? I, 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 I'm trying to figure out. So the like, Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, AIDS. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's a, it's a society where if you want to send your kids to school, you have to pay money to send them to school. There's no public education, so. People just don't know stuff. Um, 95% of Ethiopian kids don't have computers or the Internet, so they can't read anything. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of fallacies that they just... Well, that's what I was on, yeah, never yeah, understood. They're, they're fed a line, and they believe it. Well, there's yeah, a bunch why of, would they? There's well, a bunch of right. charities around here that are like, buy a laptop and we'll send one to Africa. It's like, well, they don't have broadband. What the hell good is it going to do? Um, most of those charities are horseshit. Um, Ethiopia is a closed economy. Um, you can't... All the stuff that's available in the stores has been smuggled in. Um, really? If you wanted to, you can't, you know, open a business in Ethiopia and then, you know, go to the Gap corporate store and have them send a stock. You, you can't do that. You pay about four or five hundred percent tax to bring anything in there. They do not want you bringing in, particularly electronic equipment. Well, yeah, you were saying, it was, you know, it's not even like trying to open up, you know, trying to open up a business there. It's if if you're flying into Ethiopia yep. and say you have a second cell phone on you, one work, one personal. Yep. They're they're gonna take one from you and then they're gonna take it in the back room and take your passport. Um, and if it's an iPhone, like my old iPhone 4, which is probably worth, what, 50 bucks now? They s literally sit in the room there and they Google iPhone, find the most expensive one they can, and tax you based on that. And it's about a 400% tax. So if they wanted to bang you for $1,000 for your iPhone, they can. And Oh, and if you didn't want to pay it, well, just go, go get back on your airplane. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me my phone back. No, work through the consulate and get your phone back. So nice. stupid question. It is a communist country, then. It's a uh, democratic republic. So communist. So country. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. More, more, more socialist, corrupt. The, the corruption is is weird. Um, the, the, Hence, the, cash economy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, seriously, the the traffic police they make um, most of them make nine hundred per a month, which is a little less than a hundred bucks. You can't live on that. Right. Um, just like we pay waitresses less than minimum wage because we know they're getting tips. So they'll just nice. same thing with the cops. Nice. Well, I don't stop for the police anymore because they try and stop me all the time because I'm foreign and I my our vehicles don't have diplomatic plates, so they constantly try and stop me and shake me down. And then I show my diplomatic ID and then they they leave me alone. Damn it! So I just drive by. I just drive. <laughs> you could not give me a parking ticket. They can't give me some, like, some cool James Bond stuff like drop like nails when they're you know they're chasing you. <laughs> or the, fl <laughs> the flipping license they, plate. Yeah. Right, the yeah, smoke right. screen. I could do that, but they can't chase you because they don't have. They're guns. on donkeys. They don't have guns, radios, or cars. It's just they a just guy standing after you. So like British what? cops, stop or I'll say stop again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop stop again. <laughs> yeah, they blow their whistle at you, and if they if you don't stop, they just pretend like they didn't want you to stop. <laughs> to about their well, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want you to stop anyway, man. <laughs> yeah. They're, hip, well, they're they, hipster cops. Nice. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but they know that your average foreigner will pay a couple hundred burr, which is ten bucks, to make something go away. I mean, that's burr, that's easy. Burr. You like saying that? <laughs> yeah, that's great. So yeah, um, I wouldn't stop saying if I was over there. <laughs> that, well, that's actually a, an African problem in general. It just, um, it's just an accepted custom to pay bribes and under the table, and it doesn't work for us. You know, I, I tell these guys I work with, it's like, if I suggested to a customs official, because I've bribed customs officials down there twenty times, <laughs> so if I suggested to an American customs guy, hey, let me slip you yeah. thirty dollars, I'm going to jail right, right now, or for a second if you if a I offered a cop a hundred bucks. Yeah, let me have the ticket. No, he's gonna now. He's gonna. And I have two tickets. Yeah, and a court date. Yeah, and I'm gonna. I have. I'm busy this weekend. Now, yeah. So, um, and it's just very. It's a very different culture. So, they don't get us, and we don't get them. So. I was saying, no wonder why tourism, man. <laughs> you bring an iPhone in, they charge you a thousand bucks. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna travel there. There was a kid um, when I was picking up a guy at the airport. He was a DJ. And he was coming there to do a concert for USA. So we had all this DJ equipment. Um, customs was hitting him for a thousand dollars. And he was he was screwed. There was nothing he could you know, he had to pay it, there was nothing he could do. 
Well, see, that's what I understand. Like, you, you, where you live, it, it's the the quote unquote nice side of town, right? It's like the yes. all inclusive resort, and it's and it's luxurious. Well, from a relative point of view. Okay, yeah. so how does that happen? If it's a closed economy and they, there's not like a Marriott that people can come in and like bring in tourist dollars, like where? <laughs> How is that happening? You, know, you would think that like the whole country would be desolate. No, a lot of people do come in there. You know, a lot of people do come in there. There's a Sheridan's there. Um, the Hilton is there. The Marriott's not there yet. Wow. But you you can visit. There. People come there and do vacations there. Um, you can do a family vacation there and live like a king, for all four of you for four thousand dollars. Wow. I, mean, I know, like in year, like my cousins in Germany, they went to like Mount Kilimanjaro as like yeah. their that's vacation. Tan- that's yeah. in Tanzania, and it's right. supposed to be gorgeous. I haven't gone over there yet, but it's supposed to be gorgeous. Well, you can go, you know, you can have a really nice vacation in Africa. Tanzania is safe, Ethiopia is safe, South Africa is safe. South, South Africa is more expensive, but uh, yeah. And the guys from my uh, gun club, they uh, they they hire like the African DNR guy, and they do wild game. Oh hunting. yeah, George Moylan did a whole yeah. African hunt yeah. thing for. I don't, know how long I, I, I don't see any of our wives buying into. Hey, we're going to Ethiopia uh, for yeah, a couple no. weeks. I'm yeah. fine with Mexico. Yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, uh, yeah Mexico is also cheap. I'm Vietnam. Fine with Disney World. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we are actually popped up against the end of the show. Um, so just to wrap things up. Up. Brightwing, uh, Gary, Elise, April, thanks for coming in. And thank, uh, thank you very for much for the, uh, for the Guinness you. and the Jaeger. That was awesome. Very much. Thank you. You. Yeah. you can find everything you need to know out there at gobrightwing.com. Uh, Russ, dude, thanks for blowing one of your nights back in town right. with us. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much and, for your uh, service as well. Yeah, be safe when you get your ass back there, man. And uh, so, Yeah, because there's more mocking to be done on, on the yeah. other side <laughs> of that trip. <laughs> You're good with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the IT and the D show. You can find us at itandthed.com or at facebook.com slash IT and the D. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, who do we have coming in next week? We have, uh, have Neil, we have, we have Neil Nosikowski coming in from oh, yeah. Trinet and Activate Gaming, and we also have the folks from Go Comedy Improv. So that oh, sh- that's right. That should be quite the entertaining show. So, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Beat it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? One group rises within Metro Detroit and uses the power of the Matrix, ah, networking, to light our darkest hour and will continue hosting events until all are one. IT in the D. Read, meet, listen. Yeah, so now I'm just like doing like stupid stuff to make me laugh. I definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. No, forget the glass woodhouse. Just give me the pitcher. For I am a sinner in the hands of an angry God. Bloody Mary, full of vodka, blessed are you among cocktails. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death, which I hope is soon. Amen. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Oh, <laughs>